everybody, today we are debating whether or not the flood of Noah was unethical. And we're starting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for another epic debate. This is going to be a fun one, folks, and want to let you know if it's your first time here to Modern Day Debates. We're a nonpartisan channel striving to give everyone their fair shot to make their case on an equal playing field. And we are very excited to have you here, no matter what walk of life you are from, Christian, Atheist, Jedi, Sith, you name it, and want to let you know we are excited consider hitting that subscribe button because we have many more debates coming up. So for example, tomorrow, atheism versus Christianity between our good friend Matthew Steele and Mr. Batman, as you see pictured in the bottom right of your screen. That should be a juicy one. We're also very excited as we have many more to come. But not only that, I want to mention if you have not heard, modern day debate is invading the podcast world. So folks, as you'll see on the far right of your screen, that banner has just some of the podcast apps that we are now on. If you cannot find us on your favorite podcast app, let us know. We will work hard to get on there for you. So, very excited, folks. Want to say, today's going to be a kind of an easygoing format where each team is going to have 10 to 12 minutes to make their case. We're going to start with the affirmative, who would be Skylar Fiction and Tom Jump. And then, after they make their opening case, CJ and Smokey will have 10 to 12 minutes to make their opening case, followed by open, open conversation and Q&A. If you have a question, fire it into the old live chat. Tag me with at Modern Day Debate to make it easier for me to get every question in our Q&A list. And Super Chat is also an option. So in case you have a question that you want to ask or if you want to make a comment during the Q&A, Super Chat allows you to do that and Super Chat will go to the top of the list for the Q&A. So, very excited to have these guys here. Want to remind you folks, first time I'm telling you, I put the links of all four of our guests in the description box. So that way if you're listening, you're like, hmm, I want more. You can hear more by clicking on those links. So, we're going to kick it over to Skylar and Tom Jump. But first, just let me say both to Skylar and Tom Jump, as well as CJ and Smokey, we're thrilled to have you guys here. Thanks just for hanging out with us, guys. Shit. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Hey, I, just to give you a heads up, I don't know if you saw the comments saying the music's still playing. Oh, that's I just right. don't want... What we have is we're... It's, it might be a little bit hard to make out. It is actually a different song. We're testing it out. So don't worry. We're testing out a different song. It's just difficult to make it out. And the audio levels, I'm playing, uh, kind of playing with it. Because when I've used it, it's kind of... Let's say my ears when I've tested it are not super astute so thanks for that and with that we are going to kick it over to skylar and tom jump thanks so much guys the floor is all yours hello everybody i'm super excited to be here i'm skylar fiction i'm glad to get to partner up with tom tonight i've been kind of uh very enthusiastic about this for a while but let's get into the topic right so what are we talking about we're talking about noah's flood and I think when we really get into this really we just got to talk about what happened and we can talk about whether it was ethical uh, what God did, right? I think the biggest question we can ask ourselves, is it ethical, is it moral to execute babies? That's the only question really we need to kind of ask because in any situation where you choose to execute babies, uh, you're going to find that it's immoral or unethical. Uh, I mean, also other things happen during the flood, like for instance, uh, handicapped people were uh, uh, drowned to death, people who had serious mental disabilities. Uh, we have a situation where, uh, you know, God could have chosen a much more peaceful way than violent execution, like uh, he chose. Uh, for instance, uh, he could have easily just had all the babies die in their sleep. He could have had it to where um, he just poofed them out of existence. That's what Pine Creek likes to say. All right, but the, the what he chose to do was drown everybody, execute everybody in a violent way, not just the people who were evil in there. Now, the Bible will say mankind had become evil, but surely 
we aren't going to argue that babies are evil, right? I would imagine not. I can't imagine a situation where it would be moral or ethical to execute innocent people, innocent babies or mentally handicapped people. Um, and I also would like to point out too, I think uh, uh, something you always have to remember too is what makes something unethical or un uh, immoral under the Christian worldview? Because we are talking about the Christian worldview. We're talking about the Bible here. Uh, and that's uh, that that goes against God's nature. So for instance, we would say that it's, God, they would say it's a moral lie because God's not a liar. God can't lie. It would go against his nature, right? We, would, we could use examples like rape. I would, I would imagine Christians would say there's no context in which rape would be moral, right? Because rape would go against God's nature, that type of violent action. Uh, so it, it's going to be weird here, right? If all of a sudden we're going to somehow try to justify that in some circumstances, it's, it's perfectly moral to execute children, and people who have severe mental handicaps that have, you know, very little cognate, uh, cognates. Um, so I, I think that's going to be interesting, right? Because what I have a feeling is going to happen during this debate, and I'll wrap it up and pass it over to Tom here a little early, is at the what we're going to end up getting is either some kind of morally justified reasons that we don't have an answer for, right? The, the, basically, it's a mystery. Or we're going to be forced into a position, a Christian's going to be forced to just say it's moral. And at the end of the day, if that's what you're going to do, if you're going to say, hey, it's moral in some situations to execute the handicapped uh, and children and babies, uh, that's on you. I'm not going to argue with your moral position then. You can have that moral position. Um, I just think that I, I think it's unlivable. I think it's unreasonable. And I think the reason you would actually even articulate that is just because usually sometimes in the Bible, you have to work backwards because you start uh, – you start with what your belief is from the Bible, and then you have to work backwards to justify it when it doesn't make any sense. And, and I'll just, you know, mention this isn't like this is uncharacteristic of God. God has multiple times throughout the Bible uh, chosen judgment on his people and had children executed and mentally handicapped people executed. I mean, we can look at Sodom and Gomorrah. We can take a look at when the Israelites go into the land of Canaan and uh, conquer these lands. So we're going to see a pattern. There's no reason to believe that it's immoral under their, their moral system. Um, and I, I, like I said, I think at best, that's all we're going to get is that, hey, well, yeah, it's, it's moral when God does it. But, you know, when everybody else does it, it's completely immoral. But that wouldn't apply to other contexts like rape, lying, other things like that. Tom, you can take it over, my man. Thanks, Skyler. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good summary. So the Christian Abrahamic God is an evil, psychopathic, mass murdering moral monster, as stated by his own word in the Bible, killing innocent children in Exodus 12, releasing chemical weapons to kill thousands of people in Numbers 16, forcing parents to kill and sacrifice their children, Judges 11, destroying cities full of people because they disagree with him, Judges 14, genocide, um, lots and lots of them chronicles, Joshua, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Samuel, killing all the men and women and making the young women sex slaves, Judges 21, sending bears to murder children, 4 Kings 2, turning Lot's wife into salt because she looked in the wrong direction, Genesis 19, helping Samson murder people to pay off a debt, Judges 14, killing people for complaining that God kept killing them, number 16. If God was real and all these things actually happened, then worshiping that God and saying he was justified in his atrocities is as immoral and disgusting as white supremacists who say the Holocaust was a good thing because the Jews deserved it. I find it hilariously ironic that the theists who are renowned for their sanctimonious delusion that they have the moral high ground don't realize the contradiction in their worldview that they are worshiping a mass murdering monster who they claim is the ground of goodness. Their belief is as bad as the white supremacists who support the Holocaust because they thought it was a moral thing to do. The, there are many, many of these examples throughout the Bible, but the focus of this debate is just one of them, which is the flood, the, the global flood. And so I have a very simple premise conclusion argument. God executed innocent babies. Executing innocent babies is immoral. Yahweh is an immoral dick. Therefore, God cannot be objectively good. He cannot be the basis of morality. He is not worthy of worship. The Christian God is a worthless dick who is worth who deserves the same fate as Hitler, Gaddafi, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, Saddam Hussein, and all of the other dicks throughout history. If there was any real moral justice, the Christian Godhead would be the first one on the chopping block. Drowning babies is immoral. Oh, but it's not, it's not the first time or the last time he did that because he also killed all the Egyptian babies with the firstborns in number 16, but that's a separate issue. All right, I'm done.
Next up, we will kick it over to our Theus friends, CJ and Smokey. Glad to have you here, gentlemen, and the floor is all yours. Uh, CJ, it's up to you if you want to go first. I, I tend to be kind of long-winded, so it might be best if I went second. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll then give you some some extra time here. Yeah, um, TJ, that was pretty disappointing. Um, clearly, your argument is primarily from a place of emotion, and we're here to argue a specific, pretty specific context of, uh, of the Bible uh, based upon the actual flood, and you want to gish gallop at us a bunch of whole bunch of passages that, of course, we're not here to debate or refute, so you think you win your opening argument by putting a bunch of things out there that aren't our debate for the topic. I think it's a little bit spineless. I think it's a little bit cowardly. And the fact that you throw in the vitriolic insults to the person that we're here to debate essentially tonight is just a little bit petty. Um, but in any case, uh, I was actually expecting more of that potentially from Skylar. I was surprised to see it from you to come across so petty in that fashion. But um, I think what you guys are ultimately going to have to uh, describe to us based upon your worldview, since you condemn this so horribly, is why? Why is it a problem to kill babies? Why are you entitled to life? Why do you have to live a certain amount of time? And is it morally wrong if you don't get to live a certain amount of time? Your worldviews are moral and logical catastrophes. And while you can sit on your ivory towers and clouds of judgment looking down on us because we try to glean an objective truth out of reality, you guys are a contradictory mess. And I think as we move forward, forward through this debate, we're going to demonstrate a lot of that. I yield to my partner. All right, and thank you for that. And so, um, happy to be here, guys. Just want to say a quick shalom. Um, so, I want to go ahead and get right into my argument because, like I said, I do tend to be a little bit long-winded, and I want to make sure that I don't go over time here. So, uh, let me say that my opinion on the very question itself is that the question is somewhat absurd on its face. Let me tell you why. There is really only two possibilities here. Possibility number one, God does not exist. Now, if God does not exist, then the flood of Noah was either A, natural, in which case there's no way it could possibly be moral or immoral, it's just natural, or B, a fiction, in which case it's just as uh, absurd to call this some huge moral travis uh, tra excuse me, travesty um, as it would be to say that the destruction of Alderaan in episode four of Star Wars is some sort of travesty. So it's either natural or fictional under option A, and under option B, which is that God does exist, well, then he is simply the person who created morality. Morality does not exist apart from him, and therefore to say anything that he does is immoral is absurd on its face. Being made, and I am, of course, assuming the Christian worldview in this, but being made in the image of God means that the things which you find inherently immoral, you only find inherently immoral because you are made in the image of God. In other words, to sit up and try to justify or condemn or any sort of other morally loaded word certain actions of this deity would be completely insane it would be almost like saying george lucas is to blame for the destructions of alderaan or something like that and maybe that pushes forward the story maybe that you know he has his, whatever his reasons are i don't care the point is calling him immoral we would all very much recognize is completely absurd he created the world he can do whatever he wants with it he can have sidious murdered by vader if he'd like he can have vader murder tons of children if he likes it doesn't matter because he's the creator of that universe, right? Now, I would actually go a step further than this on top of the fact that I think it is, it is purely absurd to actually uh, put moral crimes at the feet of the very person who established what morality is in the first place. Um, I also do think there is a little bit of a contradiction in many atheists. Now, of course, Skylar and T-Jump are their own men, and they will be able to let us know if they uh, affirm the problem of evil. However... Isn't it interesting that you have many, many, many atheists all across the world who do affirm the problem of evil and find it to be an absolutely indisputably, indisputably, excuse me, um, unsurmountable problem for Christians. And yet, when God does something about murder by punishing wicked people, when he does something about rape by punishing the wicked, when he, whatever it happens to be, by punishing these wicked nations, these wicked people groups, the atheist immediately jumps up and says, well, I don't disagree with your, well, I don't agree rather with your methods. Well, okay, do you want the stopping of this uh, evil or not, right? Is God immoral for allowing evil, or is he immoral for destroying evil, right? Because you can't possibly affirm both things. He's either immoral because he let everything happen during the times of Noah, or he's immoral because he wanted to get rid of that and condemned it and all that other sort of stuff. I would also quickly point out that we are talking about here, right, 
a being that, at least from my perspective, of course, I understand the two atheists are going to disagree with this, is literally perfect, right? In other words, when you see we have things like uh, abortion, warfare, the death penalty, so on and so forth, where we fallible human beings do indeed take the life of other human beings. Now, whatever your particular positions on things like personhood, just war theory, whatever that happens to be, the scientific fact of the matter is, is all three of those examples that I just mentioned, human life is being taken, right? In other words, we fallible human beings who commit what the Bible would classify as sin literally every single day, think that we are justified in executing human beings. And yet, when the literally sinless, omnipotent, omniscient, eternal creator of the entire universe decides that he's going to do the very same, we think that we are in a position to judge him and to condemn him. And I think that, that is completely absurd. Um, in order to be logical in this conversation, I think that you would have to say and then justify that the taking of human life, even if it is wicked, is always wrong. And I don't think anybody is actually willing to make that position. If they are, then potentially they are. Obviously, we'll see there. But then how did we free the Jews again in that Holocaust that Tom Jump mentioned by killing human beings. How did we make sure that the United States of America, at least in certain instances like Alaska, Hawaii, so on and so forth, are not currently speaking Japanese and under the oppressive rule of a dictatorial theocratic government? Well, because we killed them. Um, why is Jeffrey Dahmer no longer here? Well, somebody ended his life, right? In other words, and of course, if, if there's any support for abortion on the other side, I think that's, I mean, that's a little bit self-explanatory, right? It is literally a human life being terminated. Um, in any of these instances, if you decide that it is indeed moral to take the life of that person, then you're contradicting yourself. And if you don't decide that it's moral to take the life of that person, well, then what exactly are you to do with these rapists, genocidal people, so on and so forth, who we defeated by killing? And by the way, let me just quickly point out, nobody has ever defeated any Nazis without killing them, right? Once those Nazis gain power, you shot your way out. It's the same with the communists. It's the same with the theocrats. It's the same with all evil people. Once they got power, people shot their way out. In other words, they killed their way out. They didn't argue their way out. They didn't put people in, in, in jails or hospitals or something like that. They killed their way out. And as a result, we have a better world, right? So even us, fallible human beings, can be justified in the taking of evil human life. I simply say to you, if we are, how much more so is the one who created that life? And then I would yield the rest of my time. Thanks so much. We will now kick it into open discussion mode gentlemen the floor is all yours yeah so i wanted to jump in real quick and first say that uh, this isn't about objective morality we can just grant there is objective morality if you think killing babies is not objectively wrong then and you can take that position that's fine i mean i just don't care i'm going to just we're just going for the purpose of the debate we're going to assume there is objective morality killing babies is objectively wrong and god killed babies so god is objectively immoral so i don't want to get bogged down in any kind of debates about what is the ground of objective morality that's for a different time. Second, you mentioned a perfect being who, that God is a perfect being. So he's a perfect being who drowns babies and executes them by drowning. That's what a perfect being does. I see, I see a problem with your theory of what perfect means. Um, now, you mentioned that humans are kill people and like self-defense and, and Nazis and those kinds of things. The, you know, I, I, what you mentioned is that most people wouldn't make the claim that killing in any case is wrong well i do i think killing in any case is always immoral the only reason we're justified in killing is because we can't we don't have the power to do something else like for example if we could instead of killing someone teleport them away uh, that would be a more moral option than killing them so killing them is not the justified position if we could just teleport them away the all-powerful sky daddy does not have that excuse he's infinitely powerful so he doesn't have any justification to kill people because he could always do a better moral option, just teleporting them away or giving them the option to be non-physical. There's lots of infinitely many things you could do that are not just kill them. So God doesn't have the same excuse. Humans only are allowed to kill because they don't have a better option. They don't have the option to just teleport people away. They are forced into this decision because of their lack of power. God doesn't have a lack of power. You can't use that excuse for him. Well, I would, um, I would point out a couple things, if I may, very briefly. Sure, go for it. Um, First things first, I would say that the the idea that it is because of the potential other alternatives is kind of missing the point. We as people who do a lot of the same things, whether it's in a small scale, like for example, there's racist Americans, or in a large scale, like for example, the slaughter of the Native Americans, do the very same things that we actually condemn other people for doing and yet justify ourselves in killing those people as you just did. God does not do any of those things. 
at least until there was some crime committed. And I do want to point out very briefly, you kind of know this inherently. If you didn't, you wouldn't have to argue so much about babies, right? The only right. reason we bring up babies in the first place is because, oh, well, you can't possibly say these guys are evil, right? I mean, is that not the point? Yeah, the point is to use the strongest example because we only need one example to prove your position false. So we use the easiest one. Yeah, that's kind of the point. But no, we, we do say that killing the Native Americans is wrong. It's one of the big things in America now is that we should probably uh, like give them reparations because we mass murdered them and same with slavery. Like we do admit those things are wrong. Like Right, no, 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 not what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we committed these acts, right? We right. are the, in some, in some instances, we are the self-same people. Right. Like, for example, if you go back to the 1940s, um, the self-same people who were putting Japanese people in camps are the people who defeated the Nazis. They're one in the same. Right. They're also the people who nuked the Japanese. Right. Sure. Um, So in that scenario, how are we going to justify people who are not only fallible, but explicitly so evil in many instances? They can take life. But the very person who provided that life in the first place is not allowed to do so. The, the, who provided it doesn't Are we not difference. talking about the flood right now? Like, why are we talking about human beings from like the past and World War II? We're not talking about because human I'm, beings. I'm trying to hold on. I'm just let Sorry. me finish my thought real quick. What, what, what I'm saying is, like, right, you, you discount babies, but that's the point. But I haven't heard the objection yet, right? So, if you're going to say babies are guilty of something, and really what I think we need to get on the table, frankly, is our positions. Tom Jump and I, my position is it's unethical to murder babies. Is it unethical to murder babies under your two worlds' views? under the Christian worldview? Oh, for us to do it, yes. No, no, the action of executing a baby, is it immoral? For us, yes. That's not what I said. Well, Uh, well, that's the answer. You may not like the answer, but that's the answer. So so you're saying that there are some cases where it is okay to murder babies. Is that what you're saying? I would say that God isn't capable of murder, as you so colloquially will try to put it on him like that. Execute Execute is the word we want to use. Execute is the word we're using. Sure. so, so yes, in your worldview, so, it's okay. There are certain cases where it's okay to execute babies. Um, execute babies? Well, again, it's it's not an a moral component to apply to God because he doesn't have the same agency. Not we, what I asked. He's non-temporal. Well, you guys are trying to conflate two things that don't fit. You're asking a loaded question because you want to get an answer you can't get. No, no, no. So God can let, me kind of, let me kind of piggyback on that well, because I could give you a perfect example. It is, in my opinion, immoral for a fallible human being to judge another fallible human being for what he himself has done, which is why Christians take the harsh punishment, or not the harsh punishment, the harsh view on judgment, right? It's, it, it, Jesus even says so himself. Uh, you have the, uh, you know, the beam in your own eye and are criticizing the speck in another's eye. But inherent in that is the fact that there's the beam in your own eye. If there's not the beam in God's eye, then that's completely irrelevant, right? And in the, to answer your question plainly, when you say, is it wrong to execute babies? I would state quite Quite plainly, it is not wrong for God to take any life whatsoever for any reason he sees fit. He's the creator. He's the one who established it. He's the one who established morality in the first place. And there is literally nothing he could possibly do that would be immoral because morality is literally understood by virtue of his creating it and setting those laws. Sure. So then God could have 100 men go in and rape 100 babies, and that would be completely moral if he did that. Hypothetically speaking, yes. Now he knows. Yeah, so, so, okay, perfect. So God, so basically it's not, so is it God's nature that makes something moral or is it what he says that makes something moral? Well, don't, I don't want to go there yet. It's a little First, bit of I want to address what Smokey said. Yeah, yeah go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, because Smokey said we're making a distinction between two different yeah. things. Um, You're also defending morality, a worldview you don't have, which I find bizarre. Right, so that's wrong. So we each have a worldview. Our definition of morality is not the same as your definition of morality. You have a contrived presupposed definition of morality, which I don't agree with. So we're asking questions about your definition of morality. Okay, can we have my problem here is that my definition of morality, anyone who executes babies like by drowning is always immoral. That's always the case. It's objectively the case. It is a fact of the case. It is provably the case in all cases. And anyone who agrees with me is going to, I don't have to answer why, because that's not the point of the debate. So (laughs) anyone who agrees with me sees that you are an immoral monster. You are insane because you can't admit to that. You have to say killing babies and executing them by drowning is totally okay for my God because I want to believe in okay. God. What happens to the babies that's, after they wait, die? Wait, that's the point. Is that what happens to the babies makes after no they die? It's, it's it makes what every difference. No, 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 because no. now you're arguing no, no, from your worldview not. into ours, and it's incoherent. No, 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 no. it doesn't make any difference at all. So it makes every difference. Executing babies and having a Go soul and finish and your babies nonsense if they don't have a soul point. is still immoral either way. It makes no difference. Yeah, so no, again, you're just saying it makes no difference. 
it's, it's, immoral, it's, it's ridiculous. Action is immoral even if there's a difference in consequence. Morality yeah. is not determined by the reward or punishment after the action. Immoral in action is inherently moral or immoral just for the action's sake. So you can't say it's okay to kill babies because of what happens after you execute them. You're still executing babies. It's still immoral. Well, this let me say, same reason. I this is, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I, well, hold on. Let me say, because I'm going to add on. Because this, this is the whole point I brought up about the idea of God's nature, right? With the idea he can't do things that are immoral. So if you're, if you're going to say God can't be a liar because it goes against his nature to lie, because that's part of his moral being, then he's not going to lie. He can't, can't lie, right? You can't say God can rape. Like, these are things. Like, but it's weird. But when we get to this, when we say executing babies, all of a sudden, well, wait a minute. There's a context for that. All right. Well, let me right? explain that. Because right. there's, there's that's a context the point. for that amongst human beings as well, right? For yes, example. Yes, morals are subjective for whatever. Right? It's, it's apples and oranges. Like, wait, that's wait, 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 where is the subjective context for humans and executing babies? I don't know of any such Well, hang context. on. Actually, to be fair, I mean, there's 900,000 babies executed in this country alone every single year. So, you, I mean, you want to talk about a This is also context. irrelevant. Human I, I morality know, is irrelevant to the topic of this debate. We're not but, talking uh, about uh, objective versus subjective. Exactly. You guys keep trying to bring it back to it and compare and You're contrast. You're playing worldview hopscotch. Oh, You're playing no, world but, hopscotch. Yeah, but that's let's not the it, topic of the debate. Finish. Yeah, this this isn't the topic of the debate. Our objective worldview, our worldview versus your worldview isn't the topic. The topic is, is the flood of Noah ethical? And in the end, what you guys really should just be saying is, yes, it is morally ethical for God to drown babies. I'd like to point right? out, I, I have plainly said that in a one-word answer already, yes. No, yeah, that's fine. I agree. That's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. fair that's fair. But like at the end though, like going, we might be hypocrites, right? Let, let's just grant it. Let's just say Tom and I are moral hypocrites, right? We contradict ourselves with our morals, completely irrelevant, right? In the end, what you're arguing is it's moral to drown babies sometimes and we're not. Yeah, That's and I, I, all right, so let me, let me deal with that for a minute because first off, I sympathize with Tom a lot being a deontologist myself. And uh, Skylar, I kind of sympathize with you a lot as well because essentially what you're saying is it doesn't really matter if I am hypocritical, what matters is if you're hypocritical, because that's the point of the debate. Is, is that accurate? No, no, no. The point of the debate is just to, to make see where you guys stand, in my opinion, right? So if you think it's ethical to drown babies, that's fine. I'm just getting it out for the public so Christ, people can know what Christianity is represented, is right? Now, instead of doing stuff like that, like just saying things like that, just a deal with the arguments. Let's not do a bunch of ad hominem attacks. I've, I've been respectful. I haven't said anything negative to you. So I'd like that same respect, right? So please, let's not just talk about how bad the arguments are. Or this person doesn't make any sense. Let's just actually deal with the arguments at hand. You're Go playing ahead. worldview hip scotch, hopscotch right now. Okay, you're going back and forth between naturalism and into our worldview to condemn it and then back out again to condemn it again. Okay, and here's the problem. Okay, here's what you guys are ignoring. Okay, which was better? Which was better? And I, I think T-Jump maybe should answer this. I, I think he maybe takes a position that life in itself is in some ways immoral because it's a lot of suffering. So I'd like him to answer this. Which was better? Which was more moral for the babies in the flood to die or to live in the environment that's painted in the narrative of the text? Um, they're, whatever they're forced to do is immoral. So if you kill them without their consent, that's immoral. And if you force them to live in a world without their consent, that's immoral. Oh, so there's so, no right answer for you. It's, it's no, all no, no, answer. no. You can, there could be like save one person or save five or kill one person or kill five. You can have two options that are both immoral. That's not a problem. There you but go. Again, nope. the, I want to clarify that the issue here isn't a contrary wow. worldviews. Comparing worldviews doesn't matter. There's no hopscotch between worldviews. Yeah. What we're doing is we're presenting our worldview, which is killing babies is always wrong. And what we're asking is, is in your worldview, is executing babies wrong? We're not trying to do a jumping hopscotch here. We're just asking you, in your worldview, do you think drowning babies and executing them is wrong? That's it. We're not, we're not doing a hopscotch here. We're just asking the question and saying, in our worldview, is it better than yours? Because we don't. You're running from your own disgusting positions is what you're what? doing in order to See, try that's to not an argument. Wait, 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 that's wait, not wait, an wait. argument. Just hold um, on, hold on. Just hold on, hold on. Just saying our, our positions are disgusting is an argument. Well, you won't let me finish. You won't let me finish to point out how well, they're well, disgusting. Well, well, the best so thing would be to do is just, in. well, listen, I, I'm not interested in your just opinions of my morality. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get to the argument that supports the opinion, Skyler. If you want to have a reaction, why don't you wait till I'm done? No, well, just get to the argument. Don't talk about our. Yeah. Let's get yeah. your response to Tom. I think I handled an awful lot from T-Jump in his opening, bro. Why don't you tone it back a notch? Do, do you need a safe spot or something? Do you no, need no. A safe spot? I think it's okay. I mean, they, you're complaining and whining about it. Let's just talk about the subject. Uh, except for I think it's okay. Else. I think it's okay for him to yeah. call us disgusting because I'm, I'm going to call him disgusting back because he thinks it's okay <laughs> to drown babies. Sure. So go for it. Uh, no, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you, you tell us why it's okay to drown babies. <laughs> 
you know, you guys right, well, let me, let me want to draw it back to this to there's... such a conflation to support your naturalistic view, and that's not how it's going to go. Like, for instance, in the narrative, anything about naturalism. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't tonight. matter, dude. It's implied in your worldview. No, you don't not. get to see. This is ridiculous. You guys don't even know where you're arguing from. Even in your opening, you're basically saying that you're not arguing from. You're going to go ahead and argue from objective morality, even though you don't have it. What, no, that wasn't the premise of the argument. Is this? Also, well, we're not going to get jump into that topic. Wait, we're not I literally gave the premises tomorrow. of the argument. So the argument are this: object, like it's objectively wrong to drown, execute innocent babies. That is premise one. That is where I'm arguing from. You can disagree with that if you want. You can agree with it if you want. It doesn't make a difference. That's where we're arguing from. Worldviews don't matter. Past doesn't matter. Executing babies is a morally wrong premise one. That's where we're starting. God executes babies. God is immoral. That is the argument. That is what we're arguing. That is the full context. Worldviews don't matter here. Yeah. Well, to be I, fair, I, there's a couple of things I think need to be said. So first tough. off, I think we do need to address, and I understand that it's not the specific point or the explicit point of this debate, but inherently in the question is a worldview versus worldview. Let me tell you why I explained actually in my opening statement. If God exists, then answering in the, in the I guess it would be in the affirmative in this case, is completely absurd. Because morality is created by him in the first place. He literally dictates what it's just like. It would be roughly akin to saying, well, you know, George Lucas designed Alderaan wrong. Well, how do you know? He's the one who designed Alderaan. It does what he wants it to do, right? And likewise, it's the exact same thing here with God. You only have a morality, according to this worldview at least, because he's created it. And the only way that you can criticize that morality logically is if indeed he has not created it. So I, don't, I, I agree that I don't want to be completely bogged down in that, but you guys need to understand that is certainly a very important question. Because well, if we grant God's existence then the debate is over. It's not possible for him to do something more. Well, the, to- argument, the argument I'm making is that in our worldview, even if God created morality, God can't make it okay to drown babies. So in our worldview, drowning babies exactly. is always going to be wrong, even if God created it. So he's still wrong. He's still immoral if he drowns babies. The I mean, you is, can claim that if you like, but the, I mean, the, I, I would like perfect. to see the Sims character argue with the designer. You know, this what isn't I mean? an ontological right argument. This is this is just saying in our worldview, in our perspective. Well, that's incoherent because you're not wait, in our wait, worldview. Wait, wait, you wait, might wait, as well wait, be wait, making wait, a let's, presupposition. Let's, 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 let's just, wait, Smokey. We'll hear it. I promise. The, we'll the come point back. here is that in our worldview, even if God created morality, he's still a dick for drowning babies. Now, in your worldview, he's not a dick for drowning babies. The point here is we're not making a point that ontologically one of these is possible. That doesn't matter. We don't care. What we care about is that our worldview is better than yours. We are morally superior to you because in our worldview, drowning babies is always wrong. And in your worldview, there can be these special cases where it's okay to drown babies. Okay, but, but if you, one if is you true can't or not, is, is like point. ground that in something though, then that's just the opinions of Thomas Jump. Well, no, no, no. Again, right? again we're, not, we're not making an argument for the truth of the moral claims here. We're just saying here are our, this is our worldview. This is our claims. Whether you want to well, claim I mean, the truth or not, not doesn't for make nothing. A I, 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 I'm being serious. I'm not trying to get, you, get a got you here, but if we're not here to actually make factual claims, then, then what exactly are we doing? Like, what, what is even the point of this conversation? Well, this is going to be problematic for you because you're not going to be able to demonstrate within the hour we have that objective morals exist in the first place. So we're both, we might as well just give up this game right now because if I ask you to demonstrate your guys' claim, it ain't going to happen, right? I've had this rodeo before. Um, now, the other aspect of this is how the methodology in which he does this, right? Why not take the souls out of the baby? Why not let the children fall asleep and then not wake up? Why drown them, which is torture. Watching their brothers and sisters, their parents all drown is all torture. So God is also torturing those people. And what about the mentally handicapped, right? Why do all these people get to violently die when they didn't commit the actions, the evilness that the Bible is referring to? Well, there's a couple things for sure. So the thing, number one, I would say that, and and granted, just I'll get to your um, point number two, I'm going to address your point about babies and uh, the mentally handicapped in particular, but just for point number one, um, the text actually presents us a narrative in which all cognizant human beings had reached a certain level of depravity. And by the way, that's not very hard to imagine. Hypothetically speaking, if the United States legalized pedophilia, it's not hard for us to imagine two to three generations down the line, most adults actually finding that to be acceptable, right? In fact, such things have happened numerous times in the past with numerous cultures. So understanding that fact, right, that is the narrative that is being presented for us. You can say that that's not true, or if you like, but nonetheless, that is what the Bible says. All men had been evil with the exception of Noah and his family. Does that now, you say, well, what about, say that again? Does that include the babies? Well, that's kind of an interesting question. You have to get a little bit thought experimenty with it. Um, so the straight up answer is no. And I would point to Frank Turek's argument that um, <laughs> if indeed you, as God, take the life 
of some being, what, however you decide to do it, it really doesn't matter because you're not actually taking the life of that being. You're just transporting them to another place, basically. The do they not feel emotions or pain, these babies? Are you just pretending like babies don't feel emotions or pain? Do you remember? Like, we not gonna, are we not going to talk about the torture part? Do you well, hang on. I'll get to that in a second. When when you were baby? Well, I, do, I do when I was like four or five, and those are okay. still young, innocent children. Well, who stop saying even. babies. Say something. Oh, well, I'll say children and babies, okay, if that fine. makes you feel well, better. No, it's not babies. On top of it. Okay. Well, no, babies no, I, turn I out, do, too. I do have memories of when I was a baby and in pain. I was actually, when I was born, I was being strangled by the umbilical cord. You can remember pain from being that early yes that is possible okay, well, and I, remembering I and feeling point. are two different things remembering and feeling are two different things right just because i don't remember it later on doesn't mean at the time i didn't feel that pain and that struggling well why is just that, to throw that why out is that, why is that bad that life is suffering so so what is with that one instance well apparently you don't think it is bad i i mean i just don't want to make babies well, suffer personally i mean because i have empathy and i care about them you don't have to okay but that's so, why i so think that's just, why i don't want babies to suffer because i care just, about them you're just making an argument of method you're just making an argument of method, Skylar. You That's have an one issue, aspect. You have an issue of, of this horrible, evil, disgusting culture being wiped out and these babies not growing up in it to be tortured and probably raped no, and no, murdered. No. You want them to be saved and to grow up in this culture to be raped and murdered and destroyed and put False in suffering. Psychology. That's what you yes. want. That's what you That's guys are clamoring That's a really good God should have left them position. alone. But if you'd like me to hear my, if you'd like you to hear my position, God left them I can tell right? you it. Instead of, right. I, can, I can tell you my position. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me explain to you. Let me explain my position real quick, right? What God should have done has been like, take those babies, moved them over to the Israel-like culture and had them take care of them. Or it's perhaps, or around, or, or, or right. perhaps, or perhaps, perhaps, weren't around, dude. Or, 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 or perhaps not Israel. We don't, it doesn't have to be the Israelites. He could also just take care of them, right? You could also be God and provide, right? He has this ability to make food and water and do all these things like create universes and human beings, Right. But somehow he has to draw the line with raising babies. Right. And all he had to do was just say, soul out, rest, sleep, rest peacefully. Or how about this? How about you stop letting humans be able to reproduce? Right. Why don't you make it so humans sperm and eggs aren't connecting so they can't have any more babies except for Noah and his family. But what does he do? He chooses the most violent way you could do it, just like all the other examples in the Old Testament when it comes to genocide. How do you know? How do you know he didn't take the souls out before the flood came? Right. Yeah. If you have a biblical justification you know? for that, that would be. Well, absolutely no. I, fine. I mean, you're the one assuming he didn't. I mean, so so I'm wondering if you have a justification. Well, I, I don't. Well, it doesn't well, say you're that. Saying, you're saying. Okay, hold on. If you ask me a question, I'll answer. Way possible. Yes. Yes. You're saying it's the worst yeah. way possible. So you're assuming it is the worst sure. way possible. So give me your justification. Well, it's oh, sure. Yeah. Let me explain from the text, right? Yeah. Yeah. So drought. What's the worst? I'm being. I'm kind of being. When I say worst way possible, I'm kind of like using like uh, expressive language, right? It's still, it's torturing and drowning somebody. But uh, I mean, it doesn't say that pink unicorns came in and took all the babies underneath their hoofs and flew them off into the distance, right? But I, why would I try to argue against that either? So like when you say, hey, prove this negative without any justification. Listen, I can look at the other scriptures in the Bible where God has human beings just slice open babies with swords. Well, First I got a good argument for that, right? actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe Tom was well, too. I think we're so talking about God... this portion of text, so let's try yeah, to stick. Sure, I'm just yeah, showing it's... consistency, though, how God does things, it's pretty, which is it's God is very obvious. violent to children. Yeah. If God just wanted to take their souls out, he could have just taken their souls out, and then the flooding is kind of pointless, so he probably There's didn't do that. So they'd make the, the, the flooding would just be irrelevant. Like, why would There's he take the souls out and then do that. the flooding? It makes no sense. It's logically inconsistent, which means it's no. probably he did the flooding, which is consistent with his nature and all the other murdering things I've mentioned beforehand. It's logically consistent with the character and nature of, of the entity. Because again, you guys are just yep. saying, well, the, 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 the children die. So that's bad. Okay. Mm, but, no. but you have no reason why. That's not you what I said. No. That's not what I said. No. Yeah. Um, and, and the children apparently are done in a method that Skylar disagrees with. So that's bad. And that so, you agree with. You agree with torturing babies by drowning them. No, right? I don't agree with torturing uh, them. Oh, oh, so why are you complaining about what I'm saying? As if like because this is what Skylar, Skylar's opinion is, is if you disagree with it. Because Skylar, your, your expectations are unrealistic. They're asinine. What, what okay, so expect my, uh, my expect expectations God. of an, an all-powerful yeah. God that can no, no, do no. anything logically possible limited by, is literally no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, limited by, is totally step. over the okay. top. Can't believe it. You have I, such I an do have to restore order. Okay, I've got I've got everybody on mute. Just a second. So just to restore order really quick, so it doesn't go too crazy. Uh, I think that the we had Smokey had given that last challenge. Skylar, did you feel like you had enough time to answer that, or did you want more? Yeah. No, 
yeah, I would just say that like, no, no, go ahead. Go Wait, ahead. I wanted to jump in and do the, uh, respond to that. Yeah, let Tom take, take my. Are we unmuted yeah. now? Can we talk now? Yeah, okay. yeah you're good. Uh, wait. Uh, you're set. Yep, thanks. All right. So, yeah, uh, Smokey said that there are restrictions or limitations. So, yeah, we have unrealistic. What was it? What was it, Smokey? Unrealistic what? Unrealistic expectations of the nature of the Christian God claim. Unrealistic expectations of the nature of the Christian God, who is all powerful. It is unrealistic yes. to expect that the nature of the Christian God is not to drown babies. That is that is unrealistic. Like he can to create universes, violate, he, can create time, he can create time, he can create morality, but yeah. he, he it's unrealistic after creating all of the universe that he can't not drown babies. That's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see how free will works differently in the case that he's going to argue here in a second. No, the, to the, babies. the option was better than the alternative. See, this is the problem. This is what you guys do. You try to leverage a moral dilemma on your side. And when we pitch you, well, what's the better? You're like, oh, I don't know. Well, I can answer you know that because you, you guys have nothing to contribute. Again, well, I can answer just... you want me to answer that? Sure, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, something better would be create a universe where every world, every person gets their own world and they get to design it how they please. And they're, if they want, they can go to other people's worlds and they can be physically incapable of other people hurting them so you just become ethereal and so someone can't hurt you if you choose to where so it's impossible for anyone to involuntarily pose on anyone else that's a better option be a mormon that's not how mormonism works well yeah yeah that's exactly how mormonism no, it's not. everyone gets their own planet them. and they all get to populate it themselves yeah that's exactly how it works no, um no, yeah no that's that's not the consistency again to the christian god claim well, no, 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 you didn't talk about consistency. Someone. You asked for an alternative. Okay. You asked for a better yeah, That's not consistent to the Christian God claim. So you're well, just no, no, arguing you're, things outside saying, of our worldview. I wasn't saying consistent with the God claim. I know that in your worldview, anything God does is going to be consistent with God. Anything he doesn't do is not consistent with God, okay. obviously. But that's the point is here is a very easy way to make things better. Don't drown babies. And there's lots of different ways to not drown babies. One of them would be the one I suggested. One of them would be the way Skylar suggested. We just give babies caretakers that are like robots or something, and they can take care of the babies and not drown them. Okay. Any, either of those are realistic things an all-powerful being could do, but your God can't do them for some reason, namely right. because he's a moral monster who likes to drown and no. execute babies, which is just a part of his nature. You if you're going to judge, no, here's the problem, T-Jump. You're not willing to judge the text inside the text. Do you want to keep jumping what? outside the narrative? Do you believe that? Uh, okay, so God was immoral for wiping out the, the people here and all the babies that were yes, part of it, including absolutely. the babies that were part of the Nephilim. I, I, don't even know, I don't know what the Nephilim is, so I can't remember. Yeah, well, it doesn't the... specifically actually say that in the scripture. It doesn't actually I, say I, the I Nephilim. I don't know what the Nephilim, Nephilim is. So well, well, they were, well there, was, there was a confusion and a, uh, of the bloodline. There was an infusion of something bad. There were perverted bloodlines of some kind okay. by, attributed to the Watchers. This is inside the narrative text. So part of, the, part of the action that God did in the narrative text was to wipe out these perverted bloodlines, which is why when it first know it, says he was a man um, righteous in his generations which alludes to something to his bloodline which is why it also gives a genealogy in genesis 5. so so there is something inside the narrative of text that you guys will not address or judge which is the fact that there was a necessity to drop you know basically get wipe these out from some of this oh yes no please i'm sure dr josh gave you some good tidbits on this well well actually yeah, I, I yeah he actually hold up but no 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 but yeah but actually he did but uh what you're saying can't be possible. Are you, are you saying the goal of the flood was to get rid of the Nephilim because they still exist later on after the flood? Exactly. Well, I don't. I don't per personally take. So, what the hell did you bring up the Nephilim for if that's not relevant to what is, the actual? Well, no, flood. it is relevant. I'm saying it's not relevant to your point because I don't believe in a worldwide flood, so it's not relevant. Well, it, well, uh, well, well, but you you were bringing up the Nephilim as if this is how why God was flooding things. Yeah, like you don't get to beg the question to make the argument against God and then not follow through. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what you're saying now. This you're know. not a, you're actually not dealing with what I'm saying. There were perverted up, bloodlines. And yes, there was enough and that was the reason for the flood, people. right? It was one the reason them. for the flood? One yes, okay, them. well, then God failed at his goal. If that was one of the reasons, he didn't kill all the Nephilim with the flood because they survived. Wait, I don't so, understand Smokey's point. So, Smokey, are you saying yeah. that uh, these can, these like diluted bloodlines were not human babies, they were Nephilim babies, and so it's okay to murder Nephilim babies instead of human babies? Is they were, yeah, as, as in Jewish tradition, maybe Skylar will probably back this up they were gaian or earthborn they weren't really quite human there was something there was abominable was something conscious? abominable about them well i don't know i don't know that much about them i'd have to go into probably one of michael heiser's books to get you know thorough answers on that but there was inside the narrative text there's something that needed to be 
wiped out here, something that had been perverted in the human race. Okay, and so it didn't happen. Say, it didn't and, work. And That's Noah, the point. And then what's the, it doesn't work. Hold it on. didn't work. Hold on. It's and like, Noah was preaching righteousness to people to try to get them to give up their lives and come onto the boat and be saved with him. He was a preacher of righteousness. This is what the text says. So it's not like God just sent the flood willy nilly. He was trying to actually get people to come to him and be saved, as he said many prophets before him. So these are the actions of a moral God trying to reach out to people. It's up to them to say yes or no. And when they say no and they get judged, that's no longer on him. And you guys want to put it on him. Wait, so I want to so you understand your point ignore. here. Hold so on. You're, you Hold on. Okay. I'm almost done. So you don't get to ignore the other parts of the narrative text to condemn things inside the narrative. You have to follow through. So you're saying that God didn't actually drown any human babies. He only drowned Nephilim Not babies. Not any. No, I'm sure there were some, and they got ushered into the hands of the and, Almighty God instead of having to suffer about in that Nephilim God-awful, babies, horrible our environment. Point. Yeah. So and, and it doesn't make sense. It, it, Nephilim wait, 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 doesn't make any sense. Ignore the Nephilim. Let's, let's, in our uh, worldview, it does. You're inside our narrative. You well, no, it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. We've had Tom go for a while. I know that. I think Skyler's trying to bring up something he had brought up earlier that I don't know. I'll yield to CJ after this because I've been talking a bit. Wait, wait. I still wanted to have one point here. So, if you grant that God drowned some human babies. That's all that matters to our point. The Nephilim are irrelevant. God drowned babies yeah, is still true. And your point true. has no foundation. It's a house on clouds. I use. That's, again, irrelevant. <laughs> to you, babies. it is. To you, it is, because you have grotesque moral thinking. Go ahead. Yeah, all the, right, the, right. drowning so, babies so, so is wrong is grotesque, for sure. Here's the problem with this justification. Right? You, you use this as justification, well, there's also Nephilim, but there, that, doesn't, that isn't biblically backed that the reason the flood happened was to yeah, also get rid of the Nephilim. <laughs> if you would like to quote the scripture, you can quote it. Okay, sure. Because okay. Genesis 6 talks about Nephilim, but it doesn't talk about the flood being for the Nephilim. Okay, also, it doesn't make any sense because God failed. If God's goal with what the flood was to kill the Nephilim, your God's incompetent no. because he failed and the Nephilim survived. Again, dude, and you're missing once again, thoughts. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was a local flood or a, a worldwide flood, even though <laughs> they literally say that he would kill all of mankind in the scripture. Right. And so it doesn't like all of mankind everywhere, because that's what the scripture actually says, all of mankind. Um, so in this other idea that like as if these people at the time knew about the whole entire world. So uh, anyways, if you have the scripture that says I need that they, to personalize what happens, it, Skylar, um, go, because uh, we'll, OK, we'll kick it back to Smokey or CJ if you want to respond um, to that. Argument. Oh, yeah. You know, CJ, I'm sorry, man. I kind of go ahead. No, it's all good. I'm, I'm, you know, listening to the conversation and all that. Everything's good. So there, there is a couple things though, because I think that they're being kind of ignored, and, and I, I think that these are. And first off, let me actually say because there's a couple things I need to respond to as far as questions that were directed to me that I never actually necessarily addressed. Um, so to answer one of Skyler's earlier questions, is something wrong because God decided so, or is it wrong because it's outside of His nature? Uh, the answer to that question, in my opinion, would be yes. From our perspective, it is a divine command thing. He commanded it. Therefore, that's the way that it is. But the reason that he commanded it is because it's an inherent part of his nature. So it's not really an either or thing. I don't I don't, I don't buy the Epicurean paradoxes uh, uh, foundation, I guess, is, is the point there. The other thing that I would say is that, you know, we keep hearing, well, worldviews are irrelevant. Worldviews are irrelevant. But again, they really are not because once again, if the if the morality is created by the Judeo Christian deity, then it is not even possible for him to work outside of what is moral. And I, and I want to be clear here: I'm here to debate truths, right? I'm not here to debate necessarily opinions. I, I'm answering the question: Was it ethical? for Noah's flood to occur factually, yes. Not in my opinion, yes. This isn't whether or not I like the color red, right? Um, the reason that I am claiming that is multifaceted, but it starts with a foundation of it's not even possible for God to do something outside of the morality that he himself established because he himself established it. Again, it would be like saying that Alderaan did not fulfill its purpose. Well, you don't know that. Only George Lucas knows that because he created it, right? So, it, it, I mean, I just don't see how we could possibly not get into the worldview argument. I mean, you have to justify in some way that this is any more than just your opinion on the color red. You mind if I respond to that real quick? So, yeah, yeah, go um, ahead. yeah please. The worldview thing is we're not trying to say uh, our worldview is supported by this other objective morality standard. What we're saying is, is we're contrasting the two worldviews and saying, which can account for the data better? Killing babies is wrong. Our worldview says this is the case. Yeah, but you just said data. Which, what data? 
killing babies is wrong. We're, that's that's the data. Wait, well, that's that's not data. Not though. data. <laughs> no, no, no. So so we're saying that if you as a person agree with this premise, premise one, killing babies is wrong, then compare these two worldviews. Our worldview says killing babies is wrong. Their worldview says it's okay in certain cases. Let's try to. And you would reject to... their hypothesis and accept ours because it better explains the data of Let, that let's... you accept this premise. Let's try to see how objective your stance really is that you're trying to take here. Um, well, I, again, it's just saying if premise one is true, then they're wrong kind of thing. There's no, I don't need a support here. It's just the premise of the argument. Is it We're wrong? not here to demonstrate objective morals. This is an objective moral. Yeah, debate. I know it isn't, but you guys still have to be able to answer for the fact that you're condemning this. You don't get to condemn this and say, you know, oh, we don't have to justify why we're condemning this. That's nonsensical and it's well, cowardly. I can, and I can you, tell you why I justify it if you'd like. Well, can I, I'd actually rather, I think I'd rather ask a question here. I, okay, I, yeah, ask a question. Um, okay, so would you, I, I know Skylar, I think you're pro-life, aren't you? I'm pretty sure you're pro-life. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. So, um, but you're also pro-life, but with contingencies, right? There's some instances where it's okay to do an abortion. Well, if the baby's not going to live or the mother and the baby are going to die, I don't, it's... What if the gonna baby's going to have a potentially painful existence or some sort of dilapidation? Like a very short painful existence, like a day or two? Well, it's I don't know. The Just whole entire a, a type of pain... I mean, these are, this is not black and white, and my morality is not really relevant yeah. here. I'm pro-life well, in general. I, and I, don't, I don't condone executing babies. Here's the problem. Here's the I'm problem. Sure you're, you're, again, this is what you guys keep skipping over to avoid it. And I'm going to try to draw just a bullseye on it. OK, you're leveraging a moral dilemma. This there, there was because of the environment, because of what mankind had chosen to do. There was no other option other than wiping them out. That was the righteous decision. Now, you can pontificate all day long about how God should have transported them out of there onto a different earth or put them on clouds and stuff. But that's a violation of the narrative of the text of the fall of man. So, again, you're pulling outside of the worldview, inside the text to critique it. And it's nonsensical. If you're going to critique it for being evil and wrong, you have to stay inside that worldview or else it's just incoherent. It makes no sense. If you guys are going to justify it from your worldview as being wrong, then you're going to have to say why. And if you're going to come in our worldview to say I tried it's wrong, earlier, but you wouldn't then let you're me gonna, do it. And if you're going to come into our worldview to say it's wrong, then you have to stay there and stick with the narrative. Sure. Right. Okay. Right. No, well, no, I, I, explain, I, I mean, we can, can explain why there? it's wrong. Yeah. But, so yeah. Uh, if this was an internal critique of your worldview, then we would have to stay in your worldview. This is not an internal critique yeah, of your worldview. You're doing both. No, so I'm not doing an internal critique of you at all. Yeah, what well, otherwise is, you're begging wait, the question, wait, God wait, exists. Wait, wait, Smokey, wait, Smokey. So I'm saying there is an objective morality. Killing babies is always wrong. Your God kills babies. Your God is immoral based on this independent standard. So I'm not doing an internal critique of your worldview. What I'm saying is here is my worldview where killing babies is always wrong. Your God is killing babies. So if you agree with me, if the audience agrees with me, that killing babies is wrong, then obviously you would then come to the conclusion the God of the Bible is immoral. You guys so all I'm trying to do is get you to admit dodging. you think it's okay to kill babies in your world. You guys are still dodging the point because you're, which, you're again, you're just still leveraging the moral dilemma. Which, which points? Which, which the moral dilemma that there was no good version of it. It was either let the babies grow up and suffer in this horrible, awful environment that probably wouldn't have lived long anyway, or take their lives out with everyone else in one quick right. catastrophic that's a event. false dichotomy. You're going to have to demonstrate that that's a true dichotomy. What are you you're talking saying, about? You're yeah, saying that in God's Go ahead, nature, Tom, those that. are the only two options. In God's nature, that's the only two in options. In the nature of the just, text with the fallen right, flesh, right. yes. In the nature of the text, these are God's only two options. So right. if we were doing an internal critique of your worldview, we would have right. to stick with that. We're right. not doing an internal critique of your worldview. If I was God, if I was all-powerful like your God was, I could do something That different. is an internal critique, sir. I just no, don't this, this know is, what is, an internal critique no, 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 is. No, an internal critique is using the premises of your worldview to show yes. contradiction. Like God exists. I'm not doing that. I'm not yeah, using You are. You're smoking, begging the question smoking, God exists smoking, to make your smoking, argument. Stop, smoking, stop. Oh, this is ridiculous. Smoking, stop. So I'm saying in my worldview, if I was all powerful or had even I don't even have to be all powerful, I'd just be sufficiently more powerful. Here is a better option I could do. And so like if we can contrast my worldview where if I was slightly more powerful than me, not all powerful, and I could teleport the babies to make them be safe or to move them to Scandinavia or someone to be taken care of by non evil Canaanites or whatever, or non-evil Nephilim, that would be more moral than drowning the babies. Now, supposedly in your worldview, God is more powerful than me. Cool. In, in and what worldview. happens when they grow up? What do they turn into? They can turn into whatever they choose to turn into. Oh, so that's, the same thing all over again, and then he just keeps doing that? It's, it's not okay over to kill babies just because, well, in the future they might turn out bad. Like, that's not moral. It's still killing babies. 
it's really it was, what you're arguing. In the end, you're arguing the ends justify the means. Oh, you know, it's you know, babies well, because bad babies become bad. What people. I'm arguing, does, does what I'm that, arguing is you question. guys again just want to leverage a moral dilemma where there isn't a right answer, and you do it from outside of our worldview, and then challenge us and jump back in to make the point. The fact that you're even pegging the question to challenge God at all shows that you're making an internal critique. T jump. This is as oh, ridiculous as when you not, said life could emerge without a universe. Works. This is absurd. There is you a just admitted there's no answer to your question. You just literally then admitted that there's no, no I didn't. It's this. just you, you guys just said there's no good it. answer to it. You no. said there's no good answer to this moral wow, dilemma. Skyler, no, no, just no, no, Skyler, cannot possibly saying, get saying it. That's astounding. So I do yeah. have a good answer. I have I a correct I answer. Yeah. I have a correct answer for that, which is don't drown babies. That is the correct yeah. answer. And there are infinitely many ways to not drown babies. That is the correct answer. Your uh, your other options are incoherent to the narrative and the claim. How many? I, mean, I don't times care you about your word. Your God is evil. I'm not asking for your from God's your worldview, which uh, you have not taken from, coherently. Smoky, go ahead, Smoky. Okay, yeah, I need to let CJ probably get in here too. I'm sorry. Well, and and again, I do obviously think that that is a good point to stress because you can say it's and again, this is why I say you need to make some sort of an. It doesn't have to be the entire point. But we at least need some sort of justification, at least one justification for what you're saying. Because otherwise, this is a conversation about who likes the color red more than blue, right? It's simply opinions, and they don't matter. And I'm not here to debate opinions. I want truth claims. Is it actually factually wrong to kill babies? And if so, why? Yes. And by the way, if so, why? When we, when we say that, we do have to take into the context, of course. If so, why is contingent on the fact that we're saying, would it be wrong for the person who provided these babies this life in the first place to take their life. Now yes. you can say yes. I know you've said yes. Why? Well, I don't even have to answer why. I can just say- You do have to answer why though, because otherwise this is just your, again, it's just your opinion no, 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 on no, God no. Right. Again, again, you're not understanding how the debate works. I can present a premise. <laughs> and if my premise seems more reasonable than your premise, I win the debate. So I don't have to like provide some kind of- That's just, that's just not accurate at all. That's not accurate at all. No, that's that's nonsense. That's exactly how it works. So, so well, whatever T-Jump says like, must say be how it is. If I one plus one equals two, I don't need to prove one plus one equals two. I don't need to prove, yeah. provide a deductive proof and show yeah. you how Bertrand Russell has this 64-page proof of how well, one plus one equals two. I can say in my worldview, one plus one equals two. And in your worldview, you're rejecting that. Your worldview is dumb. That's what we're doing here. We don't yeah, need yeah, to- in that conver If you have that conversation with me, not only do you have to prove that, but on top of that, if you're not proving that, then the conversation is completely irrelevant. And by the way, just for the record, you don't need 62 pages to prove it. And that's why I said we don't need to make it the entire point of the debate. We need something, just something. All I need to okay. do is put one stick, two stick. Here's right. two sticks. Think Value is two, right? Maybe this, at some point, we might want to navigate toward a final topic related just because we've covered this territory a lot. But Skyler, well, and I do want to address the judgment claims for sure. Well, can I do the You asked for a proof. You asked for a proof. So I'll give you a proof. Drowning babies is immoral. That's that's the one plus one equals two. Drowning babies is immoral. I don't that's need. That's not a proof though. You're just you're that's, making that's, a loaded is, claim without justifying it. I'm I'm happy with that proof. Drowning babies just is immoral. You can disagree with that, but I'm happy with yes. that. Proof. Listen, guys, you guys can disagree. This is the like unless you, you're not going to be able to do this, the same thing. You're not going to be able. You to have no justification for anything you say. Scott. Middle of my sentence. Middle of my sentence. Interrupt the beginning of yours. Is that what happened there? <laughs> Let's give because I was just talking and explaining what's going on here. So, right, listen, I'm not going to play. We're not going to play the game where you say, "Hey, you have to prove your morality is really, really real," right? When you haven't done so, right? You're right now. It, it is opinion versus opinion because you don't have anything other than an opinion at this point. All right, I think, I think we are we are perfectly comfortable. If if we want to say this debate, you guys want to argue, hey, under our worldview, it is ethical to execute babies sometimes. Perfectly fine. We're happy to say we just have a disagreement of opinion right on it. We we don't. We don't think it's ethical. Now, if you want justifications from me, I can explain it, right? The reason I don't think it's moral to drown or execute babies is first, they're innocent. One, they have no guilt. Second, uh, I don't want to harm babies. Like, they, I don't want to hurt them. My, 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 every emotion in my body is like, hey, this is a baby, you know, kiss the baby, don't fucking cut it open or drown it, right? Now, if, if your morality, right, doesn't tell you that, we can't help you, right? If you're going to follow Bronze Age morality, right, and you want to follow the Old Testament God who endorses slavery, genocide, and every other little thing, right, go ahead. But don't pretend like you, you, you need an objective answer. You need an objective moral standard for our opinion to have any value. If you don't value that, you know, babies shouldn't be drowned, I can't help you with it. 
Yeah, just to clarify it's one just... thing. So to me, drowning babies is wrong is equally like as supported and obvious as one plus one equals two. So if you don't want to grant that, I mean, that's on you. That's like saying one plus one does not equal two from my perspective or from anyone who shares okay, the worldview's perspective. Let's, uh, right. what we'll do, let's hear from both of these guys now from the yes side. And soon enough, we'll go into the are, Q&A. Are yes if side? either side wants side? to... Hold on, I'm talking. If either side wants to basically... If they would like to defer to the other, that's awesome. Otherwise, I'll take us into Q and A in about five minutes. Um, go, go ahead, CJ, and maybe I just have one quick thing to say at the end. Go ahead. Well, uh, so I would just like to say a couple things. The first thing is that whether or not something is intuitively obvious does not actually. First, it doesn't make it correct, and second off, it doesn't explain it. For example, it's intuitively obvious that you stick to the ground on the planet Earth. However, that has nothing to do with whether or not gravity is a thing, as far as the force. It means that we need to explain that force that is gravity. Right. And of course, people have done that now. But the fact that it's intuitively obvious doesn't mean anything. Likewise, there are things that can be intuitively obvious that are false. I would argue that if you go straight on just pure intuition, the earth is flat. But we know the earth is not flat. We have evidence, positive evidence the earth is not flat. So not only does it not actually give an explanation, but on top of that, it just so happens that intuition can be wrong all the time. In fact, it very often is. And I'll give you another perfect example, the miasma theory of disease, right? The miasma theory of disease is blatantly obvious because you walk into a place, it smells bad, and now people are sick. Seems like pretty good logic, but it's wrong. It's not true, right? And so that, that is why I think that is such an important question. Now, I want to move on really quick because I don't feel like I, I was addressing it and maybe it should be addressed. Um, there is a question here about judgment in and of itself. Now, uh, Skylar, you made the claim, and I appreciate you uh, making the claim because it's something that, you know, to deal with substantially, um, that I, my justification is that babies are innocent. Now, I'm going to ignore that I do believe innocent is kind of a loaded claim, like innocent of what? Um, let's just ignore that for a second, just because I Anything. understand that that's not going <laughs> to yeah. be the point of the debate. Yeah. Let's assume for a second that um, basically the question is whether or not are they innocent rather than innocent according to what? Well, according to the biblical scriptures... No human beings are innocent. And I think that's, a, you want to talk about intuitively obvious, that is intuitively obvious. We have seen time and time and time and time again. What are babies parents, guilty of? What are babies guilty of? Virtually we, uh, everything in human nature is repulsive, I'll be honest with you. So, what, I'm, so, I'm sorry, we're, action we're gonna, let's, let's, give, let's give CJ just a, a smidge to finish up because it's been... Well, wait, we're trying to interact back and forth. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 hold on, hold on. To, like, yeah. Let me finish. What I, what I meant by smidge is, I mean... <laughs> CJ, you've been going a while, so I, I want to give you like a smidge more of time, and then we've got to kick it over. Okay, well, so basically, what I'm saying is, so um, human beings, by and you look at the youngest of children, they are naturally no, selfish. They no, no, babies. Evil, they no, lie. no. Tell me how a baby is sinful, or what does it do that's evil? What is, how is a baby that, sinful? Everything that a human being. Period. I don't care what. No, no, but no, 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 no. I understand those, but evil. just give me one thing a baby does that's sinful or. Or something like that. I think, I think he's saying human nature is sinful. Therefore, babies are sinful because they're human nature. Yeah, but that's such a value. It doesn't mean that that we're just nature, yeah, babies, sinful. Babies nature is sinful. Don't but do a sin in a, in a typical sense because again, it's it's they're beyond the age of accountability. So whatever they would do wouldn't be considered oh. sinful, even if it was wrong. Okay, so what what is about their nature then? So what is it that 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 they're basically well, because it's just, of the way their nature is? They're it's okay to execute them. That's what I'm trying to say. No, it's not that they're what okay to there? execute them. It's that it's that the well, it is of course better than the alternative. Because the alternative was to grow up in an environment that was sick and horrible and painful, and probably they'd have. Yeah, that's a false dichotomy. Like their, that's well, a no. false dichotomy. Their parents, their parents killed them because their parents were evil and horrible no. and disgusting. That's, and that's refused you can't to back change. it up historically. Even no, of course I can't because because Noah no, was can. a preacher. Not, I, I, yeah, it says it how are you going to back something? something? Are you going to let me finish? It's, we have to argue from the text, bro. You don't get to just pull out to your worldview every time you get caught in a cycle. Okay, Listen, here's the issue. Noah bro. says that it was a preacher of righteousness. Okay, so he was trying to get people to stop what they were doing. The parents didn't stop. They killed their children. It not doesn't God. articulate they that. Had a it does not articulate that in the Bible. Question, You're making stuff up. That doesn't say that okay. in the Bible. Okay, all right, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. Question, so, so say that they're killing their children fault, pre-flood. You do have to so, go into the Q&A pretty quick. If, so. if it's the parents' fault because the, the, that the children are dead, then does that mean that it's the parents' fault of the Jews' children who are dead because Hitler killed them because they didn't stop being Jews? Is, that, is, it, is it the parents' fault? What are you talking stop? about? 
you're talking well, about. So you're saying that it's the parents' fault that the children died. That they're, they're morally culpable. Even they, though God they, stopped, the they kept sinning and they didn't follow Noah right, onto right. the boat. Yeah, so, so, so they, they killed didn't their children. do what God said. So right. God mass murdered them and their kids. Therefore, it's the parents. The fault? kids. The kids got to go to heaven. The parents were judged. And I don't care about heaven. God drove. We're not talking about, about where children. they go. We're talking about it's what just, happened. It, no, you guys just want to keep an ongoing cycle of it. Just like T jumps, ridiculous example. Okay, move them. Okay, they grow up, still have free will. They do the same thing over again. Okay, move them. It's just the constant infinite regression. Your, your guys' examples to solve it are all nonsensical yeah. and stupid. Talking more about us than the actual topic. No, no, dude. Because you can't Our arguments are bad. We're terrible. We're awful. I, yeah. I'm giving okay, you Okay, I get example. it. But actually, yeah, and I'm giving you an example. You create a false, you create, you've created a false dichotomy. So, you created wow. a false dichotomy that wasn't what happened. You're you so beat stuff that was not biblical. It wasn't biblical. But you were arguing. Sorry. I did want to cut a short. CJ said. Because uh, CJ uh, mentioned that intuitions don't prove anything. You're right. Intuitions don't prove anything. Just like I say that one plus one equals two doesn't prove one plus one equals two. But it's so intuitively obvious to me that counts is significant enough to be sufficient to just believe it on that. So we're gonna, let's go we're going longer. To let's go longer. We, we, we've, we've got a lot let's of questions. Longer. And so I do want to get through as many of these as possible. Thanks for your question. First, from Dave Gar, who asks, uh, says, actually, he says, thank you for your service, T-Jump. Semper Fi. I didn't know you were a Marine. Veteran? Absolutely not. I, I wouldn't qualify. I wouldn't pass <laughs> it like this. Next. Well, I it Maynard for a saves. I it for a May, but yes, thank you to anybody who served for real. And Maynard saves. Thanks for your question. Says I smoked a doobie with Tom's chair back in the summer of '79 under his claws. Raw men. <laughs> Rob man under his claws there it is so Mothra J Disco thanks for your question says CJ is proof the education system is failed it's wow. perfectly fine that you believe that um, I'll actually to be perfectly fair with you so you can't pin me against the education system because I'm a high school dropout so they're just throwing a big old glob of poop at you CJ next up Steven Steen thanks for your question says Atheism is the Florida of faith-based beliefs. How dare he? How dare he? Next up, iPhone Musings, thanks for your super sticker. Appreciate it. Love the support. Appreciate your positivity. Converse Contender, good to see you. Says, is wise to judge, is it wise to judge God according to human normative ethics? I'm totally okay with judging drowning babies to be wrong. Like I think that's obvious enough that yeah, we can draw, we can judge God for that one. That's pretty pretty clear. I, I don't I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I don't want to hang out with a baby drowner. Like it's just something that I I don't really feel like it would be a good place for me to hang out with someone who drowns babies, or all the other violent stuff that he does. Like it just that wouldn't be the kind of person I know you wouldn't want to hang around with. Like think about it. Someone's like yo, I drown babies. You're gonna be like, oh, not today, folks. Not today. Yeah. Your next, alternatives are worse. Next up, movie theory. Tom's old buddy says, T Hump apparently missed the topic. LOL. <laughs> Classic troll finishing with the LOL. You could respond if you feel you need yeah. to, Tom, but you don't have to. Yeah, it was the same with Smokey's introduction. Like my my introduction was meant to give backing to the original topic, which I did address at the very end. I gave an actual premise argument that this was the topic. God drawn babies. Drowning babies is immoral. God is immoral. So I did actually address the topic. I also addressed other things in addition to it as a preamble. Gotcha. Thanks for your question. From Sunflower says, if someone would rather die than live in solitary confinement on Mars or some island after being teleported away, how is killing them more wrong? I'd say it wouldn't be. I'd say if they want to die, it's moral to kill them if they choose that. So if the babies grew up and yeah. said, we don't want to live anymore, then it would be moral to end their lives at that point, but not before, only if they voluntarily chose to desire that. Gotcha. And Awkward Saint, thanks for your... By the way, Awkward Saint, if you guys remember our guest who, if I remember right, he argued that the moon landing was forged. Don't forget it. His oh. question is, he says, yo, the flood was sent to wipe out the Nephilim, the sons of the fallen, who contaminated the human race's genetics to try and stop Jesus from being born for our salvation. I already kind of covered this. If you Sir. feel like you need to address it more, I think that it's kind of an uh, objection toward our atheist guests. Yeah, Sir, I'll, I'll, I'll just if say I could just John... real quick, can I tell him to please come to my channel for a conversation? And please go ahead. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I would just say if that's the case, your God failed, which means your God fails at things. 
which doesn't seem biblical, right? Because if it was the goal to kill the Nephilim, why do they show up later on after the flood? It's sort of problematic here. Gotcha. It's probably because the, that stuff about the Nephilim was added to the Bible much later. Well, there's the things here, so. yeah. Pizazu. Don't let <laughs> them fool you. It's stupid horror energy striking again, says, oh. if I create an AI that becomes sentient and self-aware and then torture it, is that not wrong merely because I'm its creator? Well, I'd say a couple things, actually. Um, so the first thing is, I, I think that there's a little bit of a confusion of terms. I defer to J.R.R. Tolkien's theory of subcreation. Um, humans do not create anything. We never have, we never will. We simply put pieces that already exist together. There is nothing new under the sun, as Ecclesiastes says. So it's not actually a straightforward comparison, though, uh, there. Secondly, um, I would argue that self-awareness and consciousness is not what makes killing something wrong. In fact, there are very intelligent animals that people don't have a problem with killing numerous times, like chimpanzees, dogs, dolphins, etc. What makes something, what makes killing something wrong in this particular context is the fact that it's human. Um, now, there is that I will admit that this does not fully do justice to this question. It's a philosophically loaded question, I believe, but it's not a proper comparison, number one. And number two, um, I, I just think that you have to in some way argue that it's not necessarily human beings itself, the fact that we're human beings ourselves, right, that makes it wrong, but that it has some level of consciousness or what we would philosophically just term as personhood, which of course leads you into very dicey territory with people like the mentally handicapped, yes, uh, comatose, so on and so forth. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> just because it's good. been a while. They, thank you for your question. This one comes in from... Mothra J. Disco, who says, Smokey is going personal, and it is the sign of defeat. <laughs> Smokey? Yeah, uh, I, if he calls personal, asking them to simply substantiate the worldviews that they're judging from is somehow an, a getting personal. Um, yeah, dude, I don't think you're paying attention. Next, I think it was the attacks on the arguments. Maynard worldview, saves. Drowning babies is wrong. That's my worldview. conclusion to the argument. Next up, What's Maynard that? saves. Thanks for your question. Said, why does it matter where they go? What's the problem with abortion if they go to heaven? And is abortion the only guaranteed way to get into heaven? That's a that's a great question, actually, and it draws exactly along the lines of we don't have the moral agency to take life. That's not given to us. It's something that has to be delegated by God. So God takes life. When he takes life, he's allowed to take life because he gives life. So you're not entitled to any life. And, and this is what the atheists believe, that is once you're born, God somehow, you're entitled to a certain amount of life if there is a God. That's just not how it works in our fallen environment. So again, they're just challenging our world view from inside theirs, but saying they're doing the opposite, which is why this debate has been very frustrating. Their, their positions are indefensible. That's why they won't defend them. Next, Iron Zombie has words for you, Smokey. Says, Smokey lost this debate. Oh, okay. Next. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for your question from Richard Ashton, who says, what about 80% of the animals on the other side of the world that never got a golden ticket? He's going to have to answer that. I mean, and I would also just simply point out that, like, I mean, if you're going to, if we're going to actually go that far, if our hatred of God is that strong that, well, what about the deer? Well, I mean, what about the deer that your dad killed last week? I mean, get out of here with that. That's nonsense. Next up, yeah, Red Knight you know? 821. Thanks for your question. Says, how can atheists argue for moral superiority without a moral standard? If the <laughs> world is just here for no reason or evolution, then they have no argument. There is no moral law without a moral law giver, just person versus, versus person's opinion. Actually, let me take that one because I'm a moral realist. So I believe there is objective morality without a God like most moral philosophers uh, who are mostly atheists. So morality, objective morality can easily be had without a God. And it's more, uh, more experts in the field are actually moral realists who are atheists. So you can have an objective morality without a God. And I do have an objective morality without the God. The reason I didn't bring it up today was because I didn't want to get off topic. It's not relevant to the debate. Like, yes, we can have objective moralities too. Next. Thanks for your question from Robert Luscombe, who says, 
Why were animals tortured and killed during the flood as well? Again, I, I mean, are we going to start condemning every hunter and farmer in the world? I mean, look, here's the, my problem with people who start arguing with stuff like that. Um, you have so much bigger fish to fry if you have a problem with the killing of animals. And by the way, I'd like to say this as somebody who is probably going to end up being vegetarian myself. I, I actually do kind of have a little bit of sympathy for the animals. However, if you're going to sit up here and go eat a hamburger and then condemn God for, for the killing the deer, I mean, I just don't know how to deal with that. That's absurd. Is there no answer there for the question or was it just like deflecting and, and talking about how people don't have the right to ask that question? Well, I think Maybe that is can... an answer to the question because why, reality... why didn't God Hold just on, spare the animals and only for the people? Uh, CJ, now that Skylar asked. Yeah. Well, because because in reality, it's a little bit akin to saying something along, you know, um, there were uh, reports of Nazis who had Jewish spouses and stuff like that. And they would get these exemptions, right? Oh, the Nuremberg laws don't apply to you certain times depending mm -hmm. on how high up they were and it obviously depends because lower people would obviously not get the same exemptions um if you're going to sit up here and start saying something like oh it's wrong for you people to actually associate with jews well you have an exception for yourself then i don't even i don't even care what you have to say right you're absurd and contradictory on your face so i, I would say that that is an answer to the question the problem is you don't know who asked that question how would you know anything about their worldview maybe that was a christian who asked that question they wanted to have more knowledge so that when they talked to atheists they would be better prepared Right. But you just Our, assumed what their worldview since, was instead of actually answering the question and deflecting. Like, that's this, not how we do debates. Since this objection is for CJ, I'm going to give him the last word. Then we got to move on to the next one. Uh, well, so I'll, I'll grant that. And basically, the question, I guess, in that case would be assuming that let's just say I'm a vegan. Right. So why? No, is no, no. A, just a speak from yourself. Just, just speak from your worldview and tell us why. Just we answer must. the question from your worldview. We've no, but right. I understand that. But what I'm saying like is like 30 seconds and then I automatically must move on to the next one. Absolutely. Um, the, the reason I'm saying assume that I am a vegan is just because then that objection of, well, you're going to go eat a hamburger while judging God for killing the deer, right? That doesn't apply to you anymore if you're a vegan or a vegetarian or something along those lines. So how would I answer the question to that person? And the answer is simply justify to me that human life and animal life are the same. I would argue they're not and that the taking of animal life is something that we as caring species do, but is not necessarily a moral imperative. Next. Robert Luscombe, thanks for your statement, who says, Tom Jones' chair makes a better argument than CJ and Smokey. <laughs> you know, it's funny how you guys would just criticize no matter what, so it really almost doesn't mean anything anymore. Like, Next. Like, no matter. It's Pizazu. Stupid Horror Energy says, if the point was to wipe out the Nephilim, what are they still doing walking around in Numbers 13? Yeah, I didn't say it was the point. I said it was one of the components of the flood. And, and that's, that's the thing. They wanted to draw it as the whole purpose. And that's, that wasn't even my argument. It's that you don't get to ignore components of the narrative in order to make Next. Your case. That's what I was saying. Alex Gross, thanks for your support. Appreciate it. Let me know if you want to attach a question to it. Jimmy Winburn, thanks for your super chat. Said, hey, James. Hey, back at you. Appreciate it. Bishop Martin, thanks for your question as well. Says, does being ugly nullify one's arguments? Please answer everyone. No. I think that's one's for you, James. <laughs> Very good. Well, I'm obviously flawless in every conceivable way, so the question's not directed to me. <laughs> obviously, I play. I don't, did this come up in the debate? I'm like confused by it. I know, right? <laughs> Next yep, this, this definitely came up in the debate for sure. Jungle jargon. Uh-oh. That's right. Skylar's old buddy says, ask Skylar fiction and T-Jump why they think babies are not going to be horrible humans. They could oh. be, but it's still immoral to kill them. So killing babies is wrong, even if they are horrible humans. Immoral to kill baby Hitler? Yes, it's immoral to kill anyone ever yeah. under any circumstances, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I would say killing baby Hitler would be pretty immoral too. And I don't, I mean, what the way that this Christian is talking about is if the human beings are robots, they're destined to be evil, monstrous beings, right? Like we act like human beings within the world we live in don't have great potential for the things that you would call good under a Christian and maybe as, as someone under secular, uh, what the secular moral system would, would view as good. So this is just a weird thing as if like children don't have a big, uh, part of the environment they, they grow up in. Like if God took those babies, put them in a safe environment, raised them by good moral people, 
might Next. be okay. Or like I said, once again, just yeah, don't let that. the people read. Just don't let people reproduce. You can stop sperm and egg. If God can drown babies, he can stop a sperm from going through an egg for an entire group of people. Seems more reasonable than violently drowning a little baby. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Next up, Movie Theory says, title, was, in all caps, the flood wrong, equals internal critique. No, because wrong isn't an assessment of what theists think is wrong. Obviously, theists don't think it's wrong. The point is we're saying is that a normal, sane human being is going to think it's wrong. That's that's what the wrong is. It's not. Jump, you don't critique. get it. it if Next it was step, natural, I it wasn't wrong. Give, I, I'll let this go for a little bit because we let some other ones go. Uh, what did you say, Smokey? I said if it was naturalistic in your worldview, it couldn't possibly be wrong. Yes, it can. Most naturalist philosophers oh, are moral realists who believe in objective morality. You don't understand objective morality because of your presupposition, no, but that, that doesn't no, mean that we don't you. have one. Got to give you Tom the last it. word on this just because the objection was for him. The optimistic pessimist, thanks for your question, says, would T-Jump kill baby Hitler? Oh, no, I man. would not kill baby Hitler. So I would do... <laughs> I would do the moral thing, which is I would just move him to a place where he doesn't get control of an army and mass murders people. And so even if he is Hitler, he can't do any harm, just like what God should have done with the babies, even if they were going to turn out to be bad people. He just moved them to places where they can't cause harm. Mm. That's more moral than drowning the babies. Eliminate free will. Got it. Next. No, it's no. not free. Well, I mean, it eliminates free will when you drown a baby. That baby doesn't have a choice whether you're drowning it or not. Give me a break, dude. It's, it's all the components Let's up to see. it. Kevin Gilfout, thanks for your question, says... I can't believe I just spent an hour listening to two people trying and failing to justify defending killing babies and genocide. Y'all are insane. Well, they can't justify even condemning it. So you're the one that's insane. Yes, we can. Objective morality no, is real. We, um, uh, we kind of did give justification. No, well, we you, you, don't, you don't have to like our justification. No, you just couldn't even answer the them. question. Why is it no, wrong? I, God. Remember, well, remember that part? Oh, wait a minute. You remember that part where you remember that part where I was like, "Hey, would you like me to give you justification?" And you said, "Hey, no, no, no. I'd rather ask you a question." And you didn't let me. That that well, part would have been yeah, great for you to hear that justification if you. Had, and then I explained it also with CJ, and I believe also uh, Tom actually explained his position on objective morals too. You just either didn't listen or something happened where you were like this. So I can't. No, you're just you're just very inconsistent and incoherent. So before you just can't I see that, before I, I read this next question. <laughs> I want to mention, I want to give street cred to the speakers, all four of you. I don't think we've ever had a like to dislike ratio this good on any video ever. I'm not exaggerating. That's totally serious. We have 108 likes and only one dislike, wow. which is probably Tom. So this is just <laughs> awesome. I'm just kidding. Tom didn't dislike it. But yeah, so thanks. You guys, I have to give you credit. It like was people me. have. There's been a ton of positive feedback for this debate. So cool. next, Richard Ashton says, babies love it. Have you not seen the Nirvana cover? Oh, okay, what a dark joke. Next, <laughs> Asmodeus. Uh, let's see. Uh, thanks for your question, says, seems like this debate should really be about whether this belief is simple zealotry. Well, to be fair, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Skylar, T-Jump, you ever want to get rid of some of the ridiculous, heady things and just talk with a fundamentalist? Right here. I'm about as fundamentalist as they come. Um, and I, if that makes me a zealot, which I guess is almost interchangeable at this point, um, I, I just fully grant that. Next up. Oh, well, oh, wait. Wow. So the dis the likes and dislikes just shot up. Respect Each of them did. Uh but you guys are still doing really well. 131 <laughs> likes. These people love you. They just can't get enough of you guys. So as, let's see, we got, oh, the optimist. Raptor Jesus. It's not us. It's Raptor Jesus working through Tom and I. The and optimist. if it wasn't for his holy claws, I mean, we wouldn't have this. Thank future. you for your question. Said, God is allowed to kill babies. Does not equal humans are allowed to kill babies. Thank you. No, it, it just means that God is morally contradictory. Because God can't lie because it goes against his nature to lie. That's what, making, that's what makes lying immoral, right? That's why God couldn't rape because God, it goes against God's nature to commit that type of action. But when we get to executing babies, all of a sudden there's context where it's okay. So it's within God's nature to not only execute babies, but to torture them. Because what happened in the flood is torture to children as they have to watch as the flood waters rise 
their parents die, their brother and sisters drown. Um, yeah, so it's within God's nature to torture babies and execute them. So yeah, that's fine. That's a pretty calm flood. My, my position is, is that morality is inherent to all conscious beings. So no conscious being can harm another conscious being, regardless of whether it's God or a human or a baby or anything. So morality applies equally to all conscious beings, no matter what, in my world. No. What 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 cataclysmic flood happens like that, Skyler? Like slow waters rising, like to specifically like edge it out over time. Like that's what you assume it was. Like well, I, really, I, I, be, I believe in the scripture. It actually talks about how the waters start to rise and people are starting to beg to come on the ship. Okay, but so, so you're talking so about it, they had enough time to actually beg to get on a, a, the, the ark. So oh, the in whole that world. Time, but I don't know if I was saying every child in unison around the world okay. were holding hands and it's fine. Terror, but I, I, I think that you just kind of contradicted yourself because you, you don't seem to know the scripture. Well, no, I, I'm saying mm -hmm. it was, Reddit was the last time you read it. flood, and you want to make it like God was trying to stretch it out, and that's just what you're trying to make. I, I don't know about stretch. I just said that he drowns babies and he tortured okay. the children by making them go through that. It's a lot of assumptions. Next, I've got to give the last word to oh, the I don't skeptics. Think so. I think okay, Sunflower, thanks for your question. Says. Skylar slash T jump. Is it okay to force your three year old to go to the dentist? And if so, do you agree it's only okay for adults to do this, but not other three year olds to force three year olds to go to the dentist? Uh, it's moral for humans to do the least immoral thing. So, for example, we have to force people to go to the dentist because we don't have a more moral option. If we could just cure any kind of mouth problems, then it would be immoral to force people to go to the dentist. It would be pointless. God doesn't have that excuse. He's all powerful. So he could just cure your, your what is it called, the thing in your teeth when you get it, whatever. He could just cure it. He doesn't need to force you to go to the dentist. So if parents, you had the option between the two, the moral option would be just cure the thing in the tooth. Don't force them to go to the dentist. So it's only moral for us because we don't have that option. Next up, thanks for your question from Alex Gross. Said first debater to take off their shirt. I will order you a pizza right now. My oh, card man. is ready. Security code <laughs> seven five nine. Oh, I yeah. mean, I've already taken off a sweatshirt, so does that count? It's really not necessary, it, CJ. Okay, I don't <laughs> think I can. <laughs> oh, I trust the Smokey, pizza. Smokey did, did it. Smokey yeah, did it. I, what if I just said I did it? Would that would that count? <laughs> The optimist pessimist says God created life and gave us everything. He can do whatever he wants, including killing babies. That's immoral. Like just because you created life doesn't means that that life should have sovereignty over itself. The fact that you created it doesn't give you any right to harm it or do whatever you want to it. That's still immoral. Next up, we have a question from D Mac says, Smokey, you said that you go by the text. Can you show the text where it gives the age of accountability? No, and we don't know what it is. We just know that there's a certainly in a level of, of faith in God's uh, fair judgment that there is an age of accountability in the Jewish uh, cultural uh, context. It was around the age of 13 when they came into adulthood and could actually start, you know, taking on positions in the household. So, you know, from a Jewish context, it would be 13. But what is it actually in the eyes of God? We have no idea. Next. Well, and if I could just briefly add, I do Super think it brief. depends because, you know, just as an example, I mean, some people, you know, this is a physical thing, but some people hit puberty at 12. Some people hit puberty at 14. Right. It kind of depends on the individual person. I'd say it's more maturity, but the, the same applies. Next. Thank you, Spart344, for your question. It says, CJ, it's demonstrable that killing babies is wrong. We've never come across a society that has condoned wanton murder and survived to tell the tale. We live in one currently. 900,000 babies a year. I'm sorry. That's just a fact. Thanks for your question from Rodney Falberg. says, in WW2, we had to bomb both... Oh, we had to bomb both Germany and imperialist Japan because they were... Man, you know how, to, how often World War II or the Nazis have come up in this? Is said both Nazi and Germany or uh, Nazi Germany and imperialist Japan were bombed because they were evil empires. Children were casualties. It was the parents of the children seeking global domination who were responsible. Yeah. Um, so no. here's the here's the issue with this, right? Is these aren't equal analogies, right? We're limited as human beings, right? Now, what would it, here's where it would have got unethical. Let's say that we had uh, a button, and if we press that button, every adult Nazi would just drop dead, 
right? All the children would still be alive, the kids, the babies. We wouldn't have to go in and bomb and, and, and set everything on fire. But then we, instead of pushing the button, we chose to go in violently and kill everybody with swords and guns and blow them up and kill everybody in the city. That's where it would become unethical, right? The point is, is with God, God has, un, like, what happened was debate is Smokey tried to create a false economy as if it had to be the flood or really, really bad people, things would happen. As if, like, there's no middle ground, as if God isn't a complex being who can create universes and human existence, but for some reason he can't figure out a way to, to have babies die peacefully without drowning them. Yeah, it's, it's so problematic. Next. Yeah, it one doesn't the, say that. That's an empty claim. Next up, thanks for your question. This one coming from... This is a super sticker of support. Thank you, Bruce Wayne. And also, Sneak Attack Diarrhea, my favorite username, says, Next debate, Flat Earthers versus Flood Believers. Are you going to take that, Smokey? Or CJ, I'll, I don't know what your I'll view de- is. I'll debate that. I'll, I'll debate. I'll debate another Christian on any. I'll debate anyone on any topic. Unfortunately, as you all know, Nathan Thompson is no longer with us. We hope Wait, he's what? doing well. He's not dead. Hold on, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> he's uh, he's all right. He's okay. But yes, we have. We wanted to arrange one with Kent Hovind and Nathan Thompson. It would have been the internet might have imploded. That's what you know. It was crazy, but that would have been amazing. Asmodeus. Oh, wait, I have a question. Do you guys know, is it true? Someone said this in the, in the live chat. I'm curious if you know, because you guys have got YouTube experience. Do dislikes, do you think dislikes, you like, have you ever, has, you can't, nobody knows. It doesn't yes, make a difference. Dislikes can affect in some cases, like if they get to a high enough dislike ratio on your channel overall, it can affect your, how much you're promoted to other channels. Like if someone dislikes a video, then they won't be shown your videos as much anymore. Also, if you have a high number of both likes and dislikes, YouTube may kind of advertise your video around. Oh, I've only yeah, been doing so, this for okay. four months, so I don't really so know. Maybe the ratio makes a difference. That's fascinating. Because I had heard a dislike's just as good as a like. I don't know if it's true. But as Modius, thank you for your question, says, claiming that humans can't create anything is a direct implication that all things are a consequence of God. You don't want to go down that road, CJ. I absolutely do, because it is the explicit testimony of Scripture. Um, you're right. We, the, the people seem to have this idea of like Zoroastrian dualism as far as Christianity is concerned. That is just not the case at all, right? God is in complete and total control. The only person who limits God is God. So I, I, the, I just disagree. God Next. created evil? Must keep moving. Zakus, thank you for your question, said, Smokey, God limited the ark to only Noah and his direct family in Genesis 6.18. He didn't give the babies or even children the chance to get on the ark. Therefore, he killed potentially righteous people, soy boy. No. Then, then, then why was... Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Then why, <laughs> then why was Noah even preaching righteousness at all? Why is that even mentioned in the text if he wasn't trying to preach an opportunity of salvation? And why did God give a set t- amount of time of 120 years before he was going to send the flood? And why did he make that pronouncement? And why did these people ignore it and allow them to die and their children to die because they wouldn't listen? It's because they wanted to live in their evil ways and continue murder, torture, and rape. And these gentlemen want, want those babies to live up and grow up in that and suffer through it. So Next. there you go. Jason Schneider, thank you for your question, says... If Skyler and T-Jump's arguments were on the table and you didn't know who was behind the arguments, how would you respond? Same way that I did. I, um, I've, I'm not going to lie. My, this is my first experience with uh, Skyler. I have debated Tom Jump and also watched numerous of his other debates in the past, um, but it wouldn't make much of a difference. I will say that it may make a slight difference in the sense that I do have a pretty healthy respect for Tom. Next. Well, what about Skyler? Well, it's not, let, let me oh, let me hang on. Let me say it's not that I don't have a respect for Skyler. It's that I have watched quite a few of Tom's videos, um, and I, I very much, as far as the flat Earth is concerned, I mean, I think you're probably the the best counter flat Earth guy in the world. So just take that if you will. Thank you. Wow, quite the okay. Gentle on James. I always wonder if that username is about me, but says Tom Jump has a mean quote. Sit in a chair, unquote, 
game. So true. So true. Jason Snyder. Let's see. Did I? Oh, we got that one. Red Knight 821. Thanks for your question, Zed. I'm curious to T Jump. I'm curious about T Jump's moral view. How can this worldview mean anything versus another worldview if there's no ultimate moral law? My view is that there is an ultimate moral law, just like the vast majority of philosophers in ethics. You don't need a God for an objective morality. That's a weird assumption many theists have that is completely unfounded based on any evidence. You can check out my, my moral views on my, the videos on it on my channel if you're interested. Next up, John Robertson, thanks for your question, says, For Smokey and Cox, how does God defend his behavior? Is God good because he is God, or is God God because he is good? So some kind of an alternative euthyphro. Go ahead, CJ. Um, I, I would say, so correct me if I'm wrong, he said, is God good because he's God? Or man, it's Yeah, it, it's, it's good. Is the goodness part of his nature, or is it something he creates? I would, so I would argue the goodness is certainly part of his nature, um, but as human beings perspective, we can only understand it as divine command theory. The way I usually uh, put this out to people is like, for example, hypothetically speaking, if Islam is true, then jihad is moral and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it, whether or not you disagree is irrelevant. Now, I don't believe that Islam is true, but if Islam was true, then he created the morality, he commanded the morality, and therefore that is accurate, right? So it's both and, not either or. Next, thank you for your question. This one comes in from Stupid Horror Energy says, is CJ aware that fiction are just thoughts with no sentience or self-awareness? If Alderaan actually existed, George Lucas would be arrested. <laughs> um, I, it, it entirely misses the point of the comparison. Look, unfortunately, human beings are not capable of creating little worlds populated with living things. So the closest that we're ever going to get is the creation of video games or alternate realities or fictions. That, that's as close as we can get. And so that's the point of the comparison, not to, which, and by the way, let me point out something very quickly. Um, you claim that, but I would put the same argument towards you that I would towards anybody, which is that you have no evidence to back that up. And if you did have evidence to back that up, you would actually think such a thing. I can prove it because people all the time are going out saying, hey, you know, there was a rape in this fiction and I don't approve of that. Okay, well, it wasn't a real rape, right? Must keep oh, it changes this time. We have many yeah, questions. Robert Luscombe, I hope I didn't get you too short. Did you have anything else? No, my, my, my only point was just to say that, like, you know, we know that people put their morality onto fiction all the time. So the, you don't actually believe that even if you think you believe that, right? You could have just said genocide is wrong and therefore Lucas shouldn't endorse it. You don't because you understand that he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Gotcha. Next up, thanks for your question from Robert Luscombe who says, CJ, please name a non-violent way that your God could have fixed the world instead of killing everyone. Uh, well, the, I guess can is a little bit of a word that needs context. So let me explain. He can do whatever he wants. And Tom Jump, Skylar Fiction both pointed out, well, he could do this, he could do that. And within the confines of his power, those things are possible, absolutely. What I would say, though, is that God has set up a certain set of rules in this universe. And being a consistent and honest person, he does not violate those rules. So as an example, um, we could just decide to, for example, boom, there you go. And now nobody has the opinions that they previously had. He could totally do that if he wanted to. That would violate uh, concepts of free will. And not in the way that kidnapping someone or murdering someone would, but in the sense that you don't actually have free will anymore. You are literally not capable of free will at that point. Likewise, um, he could, uh, let's say, you know, be working miracles constantly. Right, every single day. But he set up a world in which he's naturalistic and so on and so forth. Gotcha. Okay. Bounce babies, Asmodeus, and drown babies. We must keep to. moving. Asmodeus, thank you for your question. Said, ha ha, no, Smokey. You're totally right. The flood happened instantaneously. Let's look at the physics on that. Are you serious? Laughing my butt off. Uh, I don't know floods that are usually not especially when they're described as cataclysmic i don't know what type of peaceful or gentle flood you think that is i mean got it and nicholas whitmire 40 days and 40 nights to you we must keep moving nicholas yeah that's how long Wittemeyer, the floodwaters are there. we must keep moving says there's no begging in the text Boat has to lift up that's pop culture begging i don't get it i don't either i don't know what does, does it say begging in the text 
Oh, you... I think he's referring to where um, Skyler said there are people on the mountain begging. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I might I might have misspoke. They may, may not have been actually begging. Next. Red but Knight. It, the water ate... did. Red Just Knight. pile of water. Eight. Oh, okay. Sorry. If you want a chance to respond, Skyler, I just started. No, just I just say that, yeah, that I may have misspoke there. But what I will say is that it says it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And nowhere in that scripture is it doing what Smokey's trying to articulate, which is it just all came down really quickly and drowned everybody. I, I mean, this is just backwards. If God just wants to kill people, he could just have everybody drop dead. There's no need to drown innocent children. I, I, I can't even understand how anybody like wraps their mind around this and thinks this is some kind of good justification. All you could do is say God's good because he's good and this is the way he wanted to do it and this is the best way he could have done it because God likes it and God loves drowning babies. That's all I can say. Well, um, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a question. That's fine. Next up, Red Knight. Thank you for your question. It says, T-Jump's morals are not above any other person. Other people's morals may not line up with yours, Tom, and they believe it is moral to hurt people. Yeah, I believe in objective morality. So there is a fact of the matter. Like there are people who believe the world is flat and they're just wrong. So the fact that someone disagrees with my morality, if my morality is true, well, then they're just wrong. Next, Alex Gross, thanks for your question, said, Tom, if there was a God, would he have a six pack? No, he, he would have a James pack. That's very funny, Tom, but we all know you have the best body. Okay, next, D-Mac. He is okay. So, never mind. So, says Smokey. By the way, you know what that made me think of? I know this is going to be controversial. Some people are going to be, they're going to rage when they hear about this. We're in talks, possibly about a debate with Milo Yiannopoulos next month. So no. it may be crazy, folks. However, we are going there. And so that's the plan, at least. d okay. thanks for your question, said, Smokey, you told Skylar to stay within the biblical narrative to critique it, but you brought up the age of accountability. That's not biblical, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's also traditional. It's also contextual into the New Testament. Yeah, no, God God punishes us based upon what we know. That's even in Romans 2. Yeah, it's all over the place. No, that's nonsensical. I love when people just say, yes, it is. And then like they think that's like a justification for it instead of like articulating and be like, hey, look did. at this scripture right here. I just this did. Will actually, no, you just said, you just. I just said Romans 2. You just aren't paying attention. No, no, no. Romans 2 does not. Romans 2 does not actually justify. Wow, you won't even let me answer, bro. Great, thanks. It's okay, bro. Next up. Is Milo a furry? You're an really? honest debater, dude. Okay, Great. next. Next. I up. am, dude. We have totally awesome, very, bro. Very special guest we have here. Tom's chair actually asked a question in the chat during the debate. It, Tom's chair is able to both seat Tom and ask a question, which was Aren't we glad the flood didn't happen and this God is not real? Oh, yes. snap. Smokey and. CJ Cox. There's there's records all over the world of a of a catastrophic flood like this, even in the more ancient cultures like the Chinese that have a culture that stretches back 4,500 years, and they have stories that are very very in line with the flood narrative. So I don't know what you're talking about. Well, and actually, even though they argue for a local flood earlier today, I just want to point that out. They argue for local flood now. They're talking about worldwide evidence for no. this flood. Well, hang on. That's That's the contradiction. From the point of the narrative, dude. <laughs> what did they? Really were they in space? Short. I mean, what's the word? Yeah. Really quick. Space Next, uh, CJ, you, it sounds like you had something to say to that jab from their super chat as well. Well, yeah, I would just say a couple things. So uh, the first thing that I would say is, uh, just for the record, I argue for a global flood. Me and Smokey disagree with that, and it doesn't necessarily impact our argument. So I just want to make that clear. Um, I also would make uh, clear that um, I actually, if I was not a theist, would still be – at least the human race as it existed at one point in time had what it would consider to be a global flood, meaning all of the humans who they knew of, um, because the evidence for that is overwhelming, as a matter of fact. I mean, virtually every culture, in fact, not only virtually every culture in the world, as far as that was alive in this time, but literally every culture that was around in the Middle East at that time has this exact same legend, as well as the Chinese, the Maya, the Inca, and so on and so forth. So I don't think the question of God's existence Must necessarily impacts whether or not there was a big flood. Next, Don't thanks for your experience. question. Sunflower says, 
Tom, jump! You missed the point of the question. Why is it okay for adults or parents to force their three-year-olds to go to the dentist, but not... Oh, I think they meant... Why is it okay that they can force their own three-year-olds to go to the dentist, but not other ones? Like, in other words, like, they can't enforce other parents' children to go to the dentist, only their own children. Uh, we have legal rights that each parent is responsible for their own child. Because I think the original question was, like, is it okay for other three-year-olds? Yeah, I think that's right. So, yeah, it's it's not right for them to force either their kids or other kids. It's only justified because they're their kids. Next up. Thank you for your question. Zakus says smoky people are born every day. Every day. There's a chance <clears throat> that a righteous person can be born. God took that chance away by killing everyone who was being born that day. Oh, that that's a that's a faulty understanding of the text and the narrative what was going on god only brought judgment when there was nothing righteous left there and that's comparative to the story of abraham the fact that he didn't bring judgment on sodom and gomorrah until he had taken lot out which was the last decent person in the entire city and then he judged it if you follow the character narrative of the text no if what if they would have grown up they would have been cursed and they would have been judged if they were judged as babies they were welcomed into the kingdom of god and they didn't have to go through that so th there's nothing mm. but positive win from our worldview that's why they can't accept it next that's up. not true first samuel it was not about that it was about revenge i'm sorry that's just biblically incorrect uh, no it, well <laughs> we, we can have a debate a, on that at a different time bro many questions okay bishop martin thank you for your question said tom can you tell sunflower they're uggy oh sunflower what? i'm sorry what uggy like, is that sunflowers? like a new hip thing is that the slang nowadays cj you're probably the youngest of us wait i got it i got it sunflower did not drown baby sunflower is a perfectly good human being gotcha and moyette morgan thanks for your question said why god lied or why did god lie that all outside the ark would die i think they're maybe uh, saying that like Smokey no. said it's not a global flood, so then God must be wrong if he said that all the life in the world I must see. have died. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd have to go look at the exact text. Uh, Next. Yeah. The text says all mankind, so it, it's, it's referencing yeah, all Yeah, and again, I think they're just kind of trying to shoehorn something into their quote of it, but uh, yeah. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd so have to not actually it. dealing with what I'm saying. I'd have to go look at it, dude. Much. It's question time. What do you want? That's fine. I'm just saying you should. I mean, you, th you figure this is the topic of the debate. You would have looked at it before the topic. I, well, not before the show. That I don't have what, that, that God, right in front of me. You didn't take the time to look at it and see. Okay, if yeah, God dude. Let's saved, spend time on everybody. this, Skyler. Real great, bro. Yeah, it's we the must. topic of the debate. We must keep. <laughs> yeah, let's spend it. some time on the topic of the debate. So great. No, you, no, yeah. criticizing me for not having it right in front of me because that's good time. No, Alex not having Gross. Basic information. We must like, keep moving. You're so petty. Alex dude. Gross says I so petty. It's That's called reading it. the chapter. Before I'm going we to have enjoy this. You're all muted. Okay, so thank you. Alex Gross for your question said I and now you're unmuted. I shouldn't have said that. Said I need this two dollars back. I didn't mean to send it. <laughs> thank you, Alex. <laughs> Mike or too late. Thanks for your question. Said the entire world was evil, right? How did Noah's family go through life without getting assaulted or murdered if the entire world was evil? Yeah, I, I would personally believe that there was probably some sort of divine protection over there in some regard. Yeah, it's a good question. It's actually We can protect Nova, but we can't protect the babies? Like, no. we can have divine protection, protection to protect Nova, but we can't protect the damn babies protection from was, drowning. My well, the God. protection was offering them to be saved by going on the ark. That's why he was preaching righteousness. Yes, let's do that with a lot of the babies, too. And we they didn't do that. Do that. Bring the babies. So Bring they the were going to continue Gotta to be evil and in their ways. We could feed all these animals, but we can't feed see, more babies. Bro, you are so this, triggered. I'm not up, triggered. Mark. It's hilarious. You're so Easy. incapable of defending next your position. Up. No, you actually, guys. I actually you have am. so much the one energy. It's hilarious. Deflecting. Mark, it's called deflecting. God can feed all to every kind of animal. We can feed every kind of animal. But we can't feed it. I'm so sorry. I, you're on mute. I'm so sorry. Okay, Mark Reed, thank you for your question. Said, couldn't God have gotten rid of the Nephilim some other way? Why didn't he, quote, spirit, unquote, them away instead of drowning the humans? 
spirit them away to where? See, this is the problem. When you guys pitch these questions and then we, we follow reductio ad absurdum to what you give us, just like we did with T-Jump. And it's nonsensical and ridiculous and doesn't ultimately solve the problem. The only thing you're left with is some sort of environment where you deny free will. And that's what you people end up arguing for. And it's not sensical to the, to the Christian God claim. No. So he doesn't respect you enough to answer the question is what that was. That's no you guys to actually answer the question. Will that, was a, that was someone from the audience, not us. They wow, asked you bro, a question, must, you didn't answer the question. Must, and you let us I don't know why you can't answer. Give, why can't you just answer the question? Off. Why you just gotta deflect? Gotta give why do you have to tell me how to answer the question, homo Santa Claus? What's wrong with this? Homo Santa Claus? Oh, you so silly, boy. What you Smokey, we're not gonna do that. Wow, you're afraid of gay people. Why is he why what's wrong? Why are you so why are you so afraid of gay answer questions? Skylar Homo Piper Santa thing. Claus. Ooh. Smokey, seriously, don't Hobo say that Hobo Santa again. Claus. How about Smokey. that? Ho, ho, ho. Dude, Smokey. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, great. You're all on mute. So, Smokey, don't say that again. Seriously, or you're not coming back. They can't hear you. So, Okay, next. Mark Reed said, couldn't have God gotten rid of the Nephilim some other way? Oh, wait, we got that. Robert Luscombe says, CJ, the fact that God had unlimited nonviolent means to restart the world, but instead chose the most violent means, proves the immorality of the topic. Um, So I'd say a couple things for sure. So the first thing I would say is that, again, I don't even think that it's possible for a God to do something immoral if he's the one who dictates what morality is in the first place. Um, Secondly, and I think much more importantly to the point here, um, you know, we, we have this idea, well, God could have done this and God could have done that and so on and so forth, right? Well, let's just take one of the examples, right? The, the Skylar brought up earlier, if we had a button and all of the adult Nazis would die, it's like, okay, even in that example, which is not a global flood example in which all hum- humanity perishes, even in that example, so what have we created now? A whole generation of millions and millions and millions of orphans who, of course, go on to commit more crimes than people who do have two parents as a matter of sociological fact, Right. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's obviously a terrible idea, right? Likewise, if we just move them somewhere else, okay, we move these three-year-olds to Scandinavia while we kill their parents and there are no people in Scandinavia. That is brilliant, right? And by the way, I don't say that insultingly in the sense that I'm insulting you, Skylar. I just want to make myself clear. Um, I say that in the sense that it's like, if we actually go through these, the only way that God can actually avoid doing what he did is by some virtue of divine miracle, Um, Now, it's not that he can't do that, but what it is is that he has set up, like I said, a certain world where there are rules that he's decided to uh, to play by, right? Um, Yes, he does the things that he wants to do, and the things that he wants to do includes drowning children. That's all you're saying to me is that he does things the way that he wants them done. done, There would be just one question where we – I know that it's it's a challenge because almost all the questions are directed towards Smokey and CJ, but we've – if they keep escalating into discussion, we do have more that keep coming. So I really just want to be able to answer the questions uninterrupted. And Skylar just will not give us the respect for that. So I'm getting frustrated. Oh, ho, ho. Try waiting your turn. Okay. Well, Robert Luscombe. Um, I can't remember if I asked this. I'm, it's, I'm like sleep five said, I think we did ask this. This, Yeah, we did. As Modius, thanks for your question, says, my name is James and I'm going to say the N word. Nice. I'm confused. I'm, I don't think he wants to, he was word. trying to bait you into saying it, I think. Gotcha. Okay. He was going to bait you into say the N word on your stream, I think. <laughs> oh, because I like read every super chat. Right. Item. Right. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I add stuff, but I've never added that. And thank you for your question. Red Knight 821 says, Last moral point, I promise. Your morality, Tom Jump, is not objectively right to others. The world is round is a fact. Your morality is your opinion. Yeah, so moral realism is the position that moral facts are exist. It's like one of the parts of that are in the definition of moral realism. So they think that morality is as true as the world is round is true. That's the consensus of the experts in philosophy. Please Google the term. Next, thank you for your statement from DMAC, who says, Smokey, yum, ama. I don't know what that means. Did uh, I just say something inappropriate? I don't Next, know. Next, Alex mean. Gross says, guys, please, in all caps, I am serious about the pizza. I transferred money out of the savings for my baby cousin <laughs> that he needed for school. Please take it. 
They really want to see you about? naked, Skyler. Okay, what next. They really want to see Santa naked. You really, I mean, you could pull off the Santa. Okay, next up, Zakus. Thank next you. Week. <laughs> I hope you get that job, bro. Next up, Zakus says, I hope so. Smokey, so they weren't born with free will then? Uh, that's a nonsensical question. I, I, they would have free will, but it's just they wouldn't be accountable for their decisions. That's how that works. Next up, Sunflower, thanks for your question, said, we let adults force kids to go to the dentist, but we don't let kids force kids to go to the dentist. God is to adults as kids is to humans. Oh, that was the question from before. It's like, why can't kids force other kids to go to the dentist? Um, well, I would say like the reason the parents can force them to go to the dentist is because they're aware of the consequences. And so they can say this consequence is less bad than this consequence. I mean, the reason kids can't is they don't have the intellectual capability, but adults do. So God can't force adults to do anything because we have that free will thing that he gave us. Next up. Asmodeus says, Skylar, you just sent my sides into orbit with that ho 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 bit. James, <laughs> please make that part of a soundboard. <laughs> that would be awesome to just randomly play Skylar sing ho 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 like that. Listen, I, I've been called a lot of names in life, but gay Santa, man. You know, but <laughs> almost Santa. Not, it was actually gonna you... be it was actually going to be Hobo Santa. That was what it was supposed to be, and it came out Homo Santa. So yeah, it yeah, it came out really big in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the thing, and listen, this is how you can tell you lose debates when you have to resort to all the name calling really early. Like, and, and towards oh, the it's end. just fun, bro. It's just fun. Oh, I, I know you think it's fun to like call people names. I'm sure that's part of your Christian morality too. Productio ad absurdum. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's what happens when I notice. People. No, I, I don't. Believe, no, I don't believe that. I think that's just what happens when think. I notice people of substandard character, like people that can't justify their positions and worldviews yet condemn oh, that. You mean them. that part where I try to justify it? You said, no, don't justify. It. No, Let the part where you condemn other people's worldviews while not being able to support your own. That's hilarious. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what that's yeah. what happened. That's what happened. How did we get? I don't know what you want to get later get to this. From yeah. Skyler being having his ho 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 on the soundboard. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Let's oh, go. we just love the debate, James. That's why we're here, bro. Next up, Bert Kreischer's fake laugh. Thanks for your super chat. Says, "Is Tom Jump good looking? I think so, but I'm not sure. What do we rate him out of ten? Well, chat. Let's re- know. <laughs> so appreciate. You know, that. Santa over here rates him a ten. I wrap <laughs> him up it. in a nice red and green bow. <laughs> Open them up on Christmas. Mm, oh, nice, nice Christmas little it's present for ourselves. Nice. So uh, appreciate. Yes, this has been a fun one. Uh, yes. Oh, ho, know, ho, Tom. A scale of one to ten. <laughs> fired into the oh, old sell chat it. post. But sell yes, it, we all know it is like Tom's an eleven. I mean, come on. But want to say that is it for our questions. We do have to wrap up as we are longer than we usually go. But thank you guys so much, Skyler, Tom. CJ and Smokey, we totally appreciate you guys coming here and hanging out with us. As I mentioned, folks, if you guys, if you're listening and you're like, hmm, boy, would I want more some more of that, you can hear more of that. Their links are in the description waiting for you. So I want to say thanks so much, though, guys. This has been a wild one. And I have, like I said, people have given so much positive feedback. Thanks yeah, no, for having I, us. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate for you. Hobo Santa yeah. coming on. Fun times. Time. <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Always good to be here to see who's been naughty and nice. And <laughs> apparently two gentlemen have been very naughty. Yeah. Sell it, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, it's kind of na- it's kind of naughty when you think you could drown babies and it's moral. You know, mm-hmm. Santa's not down with that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> nice. You uh we what is it? We uh you get some rocks on Christmas, just like those little <laughs> Yeah, you're not coming in my house, bro, especially with that accent. We Maybe you, sh- maybe you should let me. Maybe I'll bring you a nice up. little present you can unwrap. Oh, no. okay. Stop. Gross. <laughs> uh, it's a nice big present. Oh, so yeah, sorry. that would be rape. Uh, uh, I'm glad you condone that. Uh, would you rape me as Santa? But no, oh, that's, that's what, what you, that's what you would be apparently it. doing. You're bringing me some big present. Yeah, that's a lovely dude. Great. Thanks. I, you're you really like, selling you don't, on you don't it. Like big, is that what you do? You take an insult and you just absorb it like the blob? Is that is that what happens? next? Wait. Okay, you guys. At least you got to make it funny. You're going to make jokes. Make them funny, like oh, just... well. Currently, you thought it was funny enough to absorb it and run with it for the last twenty minutes. So good job, dude. Okay, Thanks. Yes, um, everyone is really compliment. naughty and oh, on oh, oh. Skyler's naughty list. But let's 
one i do have one last question so sorry james w folks if you first of all i want to mention if you ever see spart 344 in the chat that is our dearest friend who i'm trying to remember the last topic but yes he's a debater as well as james w is a debater i can't remember james wait james w debated that i remember that was alien abductions which by the way you guys i am stoked we uh we might actually host hugh ross on the topic of whether or not alien abductions are the real deal so that should be super as skyler says uh <laughs> it should be awesome we'll just say that so okay where is uh, james w i'm looking for your question in the chat bro i'm so sorry it's like it's just once the Q and A gets rolling, it's hard for me to keep an eye on the chat. Is this some sort of tasteless joke, James? Well, I will mention this: a couple of things. One, kind of curious if we get while we've got everybody here, mm -hmm. I, if you can give like one or two sentences to say why, if you want to. But I'm curious about this because it's coming up and it's on everybody's mind in the back of their mind because we're still a number of months away, four months away or so. What's your probability assessment? that either trump or biden wins uh I biden's doubt. gonna win by a small margin <laughs> yeah i think so too yeah i think trump's gonna win trump 2020 uh, well, that I, makes yeah. perfect sense now with the homophobic oh sure it does yeah bro. yeah because i'm not homophobic. That, <laughs> that makes perfect sense now i'm not homophobic you just give me vibes. you just called someone santa homo but you know uh, not well, as i explained I, I it came out wrong it was supposed to be homos well, you're the one to explain it on later on you're, you're deciding to run with it for 20 minutes hey, hey, well no on, i explained it right away come on guys cj's answer um i Personally, believe Trump will probably win in 2020. It's pretty rare that the incumbent loses. Um, and also, I do think that Biden did himself a major disservice by kind of attaching himself to Sanders when he was supposed to be the moderate candidate. Um, but I, I have a feeling Trump will be the first president to lose the popular vote twice. <laughs> gotcha. And James W., thanks for your question. Appreciate it. Wow. Says, if Christianity is true, isn't having kids evil? You'd run the risk... They can't believe in Jesus on faith and thus be tortured forever. Wouldn't it be better to never exist? No, no, i not even not even close. In fact, that's uh, that really sounds a lot like antinatalism for one. For two, yeah. the Bible is quite clear. Go forth and multiply. It's a literal command. Well, and plus, uh, the, you don't the, the idea of depriving the choice in that particular context would be wrong because it's outside. It's again, it's the judgment of us versus the judgment of God. It's a temporal mind with agency with temporal agency versus a non temporal mind with non temporal agency. So it's a false dichotomy. It's a false comparison. Next, we must continue on. Want to say thanks so much to our guests. Thank you, everybody in the chat, for making this a blast. It was a party. I uh, enjoy reading your, your feedback as well. as Just thanks for hanging out with us, just kind of keeping it real, even if you're just sitting back. So with that, keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable, folks. We hope you have a great rest of your Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow as Mr. Batman, for the first time, joins us on a debate on atheism versus Christianity. So hopefully we'll see you then and have a great night, folks.